compare cheap van insurance quotes that really do cut the mustard at mustard.co.uk. Details online, authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. The Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast with Lucas Jaguar. The big event is on now with exclusive discounts on approved used Jaguars. It's game day, and this is the home of Scottish football. It's Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Good afternoon and a happy new year from everyone at Clyde One Super Scoreboard as we strap ourselves in for another year of guaranteed drama in Scottish football. It starts with a bang at Ibrox this lunchtime. Celtic looking to move towards one hand on the league as Rangers aim to kickstart a title push of their own. Then it's along the M8 for an Edinburgh derby passing Livy Mullerwell on the way and Aberdeen Ross County, St Mirren Kelly and St Johnston Dundee United make up your six game football feast to kick off 2023 in the company of Gordon DL, Mark Wilson and Hugh Evans. Ibrox houses the flagship fixture in the flagship competition If Celtic win, it is game over with regard to the title race If Rangers win, it is game on I'll let Andrew McLean bring you up to speed with the team news But all I'll say is this On the third day of September Celtic beat Rangers 4-0 at Celtic Park None of the goal scorers from that day start against Rangers on the second day of January. Odd is the word I would use to describe that stat, but as people will tell you, what do I know? What a fantastic day ahead we've got. You look at the fixtures all up and down the country, Gordon, and they are great. And we start with the main event, Rangers v Celtic to kick off the year. What an afternoon we have in store. Well, the lads in the studio and probably Andrew and Jim at Ibrox, I think we're all excited for this game, Gordon. Um, it's a fantastic fixtures card this afternoon, but this is the one everybody will have their eyes on. I totally agree with you. It could be a massive day for Celtic and going and clinching another title. What a day it promises to be. High drama guaranteed. We are here until six o'clock and there truly is only one place to start. Let's go to Ibrox and get that team news that Hugh Keevan is alluding to with Jim Duffy and first Andrew McLean. Yeah, well, 2022 was quite a year for both these sides, wasn't it? The highs of that run to Seville and a Scottish Cup win for Rangers, but they were unable to retain that Premiership title and a run of poor results led to the exit of Giovanni Van Bronckhorst and the return of Michael Beale to Ibrox. He's four games into his reign, but he'll be hoping he can really kick-start his time in charge with a big result here at the start of this new year. As for Celtic, they went from strength to strength under Ange Postacoglu. They clinched that league title. They saw plenty of new faces come on board and have now stormed nine points ahead of their rivals in the table a win could today could be a big big step towards a second successive title but let's see what 2023 has in store for both these sides as for team news for today some really interesting stuff as well, well start with Rangers two changes for them from that win last week against Motherwell Ryan Jack and Alex Lowry drop out in come Glenn Kamara and Fashion Sakala who gets a start as well so it's Alan McGregor in goal for Rangers the back four James Tavernier Connor Golton Ben Davies and Borna Barisic, the midfield three, John Lundstrom, Glenn Kamara and Malik Tillman, Fashion Sakala and Ryan Kent supporting Alfredo Morelos up top. The substitutes for Rangers today, McLaughlin, Jack, Cholak, Sands, Wright, Ruth, Arfield, King and Devine. As for Celtic, what about this? We wondered who was going to start at right back for them today. Well, Canadian international Alistair Johnson comes straight in for his first start and what an occasion to do it. It means Rio Hattati moves back into midfield and in the front line, James Forrest and Dyson Maida are preferred to Jota and Abada. So it will be Joe Hart in goal for them today. The back four, Alistair Johnson, Cameron Carter-Vickers, Carol Starfelt and Greg Taylor. The midfield three, Carl McGregor, Rio Hattati and Matt O'Reilly with James Forrest, Kyogo and Dyson Maida. The front three, the substitutes being Giacomakis, Abada, Moy, Jota, Kobayashi, Bernabe, Abelgaard and Juranovic. The referee for this one at Ibrox today, John Beaton, the VAR, Willie Collum, Jim Duffy alongside me certainly very interesting team news maybe Sakala, the surprise inclusion for Rangers but you look at that Celtic team I'm not sure many people will have predicted Alistair Johnson coming straight in and as well that front line Forrest and Maida preferred to Jota and Abada. Yeah I think there's surprises in both camps, you're right I thought right Jack would start today uh, in the middle of the pitch but uh, that hasn't the case so Rangers are a very um, forward thinking team I think when you look at Sakala come in Tillman are playing advanced of Lundstrom and Kamara 
Um, so, you know, I think you can just have to go for it. As uh, Hugh said at the start of the programme, it's a massive match for Rangers if they can manage to get all three points and keep them in the fight. But uh, from Celtic's point of view, yeah, Alistair Johnson, what a debut that's going to be. And um, I think not many fans would have thought um, the man of the match from midweek, Alice, um, Aaron Boy, would be left out in a magnificent performance um, in his last match. And James Forrest coming back in, all the experience in the world, knows what it is to play in these big games. But uh, again, I think like uh, many is either a bad or trotter or thought better get it on and not James Forrest. Yeah, frosty day in Glasgow, but I'm sure it's going to be fiery here at Ibrox. 24 minutes until kick-off. One of these fixtures, Gordon Diel, where you speculate and you argue about the team lineup weeks in advance, and we've arrived on the day of the game, and I think it's safe to say, as the guys have suggested, there are one or two surprises in there. Start with the home team for us. What jumps out for you? Yeah, I think I think Jim Duffy uh, touched on it there with Ryan Jack, the experience of him, uh, a terrific footballer, but... I look at that midfield five, which I would call two, probably Lundstrom and Kamara. You'll get Sakala, Tillman, Kent. There's good energy, there's good pace about it, and they're going to need it, Gordon, because if you look at what Celtic have got against you, you'll need that pace, you'll need that energy, you'll need to get about the park. Um, I think that's a good looking Ranger side. I think it's strong, and obviously, there was question marks over the lad up front, Morella's fitness. He plays today, he could be a big, big player, but. I think the back four picks itself and the experience of McGregor, who knows his game inside out, he's back in there. So I think the Rangers fans sitting just now are watching and listening to us. They'll be delighted with that team. Celtic team, Mark Wilson, is very, very interesting indeed in a number yeah. of ways. Yeah, well, first of all, you look at the back four and the right back position was up for debate. Hugh and myself had a chat about it. On Friday I thought Juranovic A fit Juranovic Would come back into the side Because I believe He's still Celtic's Best right back But Today It's Alistair Johnson Like you suggested It would be And then you look Further forward Now When you look at Celtic star players Over the last 18 months You look at Jota You look at Abada Who's had a great return In this fixture And both of them On the bench Replaced by Maeda Who was good at Easter Road Got to say Took his goal Fantastically well and on the other side, James Forrest. I don't think many Celtic fans going along to Ibrox or tuning in today would have expected James Forrest to start the game. However, Ange Postecoglou obviously thinks he's the right player for this fixture. Hugely experienced, uh, interesting day ahead with that team. How do you argue with Ange Postecoglou? The man's won 18 of his 19 league games so far. He's lost only one of his last 51 league games. But it still looks strange to me. The goal scorers from the 3rd of September We know that uh, David Turnbull can't play today because of a suspension But the other goal scorers are left out And uh, Abada uh, has shown in the past that he's capable of giving Borna Barisic A hard time of it in these particular games So I find the team a strange one Not the one the Celtic supporters expected But I repeat how do you argue with a man who's lost one of his last 51 league games? At the right-back situation, Jim, we, we have been floating this idea. It's not entirely surprising. It's something Ange Postacoglu has done in the past. You just had the feeling that he might. It was accelerated by the fact that Alistair Johnson, yes, he's a new signing, but he's been in the building for a number of weeks. He's been, he's been training. He's obviously got that competitive edge from the World Cup anyway. Um, so... I mean, rate rate your level of surprise if you like that, that he plays. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, a moderate level of surprise um, because Juranovic is there, and as Mark said, you know, we think he's the best right back at the club at this moment in time. So normally you go with your strongest side, but we know the whole um, aspect of the business side of football, so that might have something to play uh, a part of that. We're, we're not sure in terms of if, if he's going to be moving. Um, but you wouldn't have thought he'd be on the bench then, just in case. Um, yeah, I, I, more more surprise for me, um, in, a, in a difficult situation. Don't get me wrong, was Aaron Moy because he's been he has been terrific um, in the midfield for Celtic recently. But who would you leave out? I mean, Riley uh, hasn't scored. I don't think this year. I think he's he's he's, um, he's, he's performance has been very good, but he hasn't uh, chipped in with goals. But it's Hattati, McGregor's a stick on. So that was all a little win for me. I thought Aaron Boy might have got the nod um, today. James Forrest, as um, Hugh says, how can you argue with Ange Postecoglou? But I think it will be debatable with the Celtic fans watching the game today and the, the, the couple of hundred that uh, managed to get tickets for the game. 
There are a number of ways that you could Look at the James Forrest so-called surprise mark I think what we do right at the start Is acknowledge James Forrest is a very, very good player Decorated many times over As a Celtic player Played many times for his country So this has nothing really to do with James Forrest's Ability as such yeah. But Statistically This season Celtic have played 27 times He's featured In only 14 of them He hasn't started any Of the last 6 games Against Rangers And that's before you get to the The subjective stuff If you like The fact that many people believe That Jota was one of Ange Postacoglu's Nailed on Pick this guy in a, in a game To save your job Sort of thing Yeah And as Hugh mentions There have been times when Leela Bada's probably kept Borna Barasic up at night After some of these meetings yeah. So when you add all that in Is that where the surprise at James Forrest's I, I, inclusion? I think so I don't think anyone's doubting James Forrest's ability But it's who has been ahead of him in the pecking order For a long time now um, Now James Forrest I think You know Is worth Having About a Celtic I think he's he's proved that In the games that he has played And contributed You only have to look back to Pataudry where He assists in the goal Not so long ago St Johnson game He was good However, in a game this size where you've got a Bada who seems to have got the better of Barisic in these outings, that's where the surprise comes in. Jota on the other side, yeah, I think Jota is a match winner, there's no doubt about that. I think Maeda has been picked here off the, the back of his performance Easter Road, but because of the work rate that he, he puts in going back the way. And against Tavernier, Ange Postacoglu has clearly thought, where are Rangers' strengths? In the wide area with Tavernier, who's my best bet to stop that? It's Maeda. But on the other side, yeah, I'm slightly surprised mm. that Forrest has got the nod over Abada and Jota on that side. Four nothing, three nothing prior to that in Celtic Rangers Rangers Celtic games, and Abada has been a star turn in both of them. So I find his uh, omission very strange. Uh, but in James Forrest, you have the, one of the very few players to have scored a hundred goals for Celtic and made. 100 goals for Celtic mm -hmm. So It's not as if he's a competition winner Who who wrote in trying to get a, a strip <laughs> uh, Jim Duffy This m might be something entirely boring uh, Ange Postacoglu may say ah, Actually Jota and Abada Are a bit under the weather And they're only fit for the bench Right And then that, that blows this full debate out of the water But we find out in time If it is just a purely Tactical choice And this is where we Bow to your Managerial knowledge Is there a chance that James Forrest has been picked Because Alistair Johnson is playing If that makes sense You know it's his debut w Whether it's something tactically Or whether it's James Forrest's experience In the fixture In front of Alistair Johnson C Could that be part of the thinking? It, it could be Gordon You mean in terms of Having that little bit of uh, Understanding of the game In front of him And you know, kind of, I wouldn't say talking him Through the game But you know Maybe helping him out In, that, in the early part of the game But I, I really don't think that's in Ange Postacoglu's thinking. And, and also, I slightly disagree with, with, with Mark in terms of Maeda and Tavernier and the situation. I agree that he will work hard, but I don't think Postacoglu <laughs> thinks that. I think, he, I think uh, maybe Jota's not been right at the level, even though he is the biggest signing of the summer. Uh, and I think my, he, he, just, he just goes with his... He's got instinct, if you want to call it the way he wants to play. I, I, I genuinely don't think he's doing to protect anyone because he says it time and time again. He is totally focused on his team, the way his team performs, the way he sets them up. And yeah, yeah of course, you play the spectator opposition, but as you said, the last couple of games have been comprehensive wins for Celtic. So I don't think he'd be changing it too much, including the, the Forest and Alison Johnson one. You, you really need to ask him after the game why he picked one player over another. But the fact is, his squad is so strong, his bench is so strong that you know he could have picked as it, half a dozen players. We could all be arguing about it. Is it as simple for you as it is for Hugh Keevan, Gordon Diel, Mark Wilson? Nothing tends to be simple here. But when you look at the league table, Celtic win today, league over. Rangers win today. Game on is it, is that is it that easy? Yeah, I think I think both Chelsea of fans will be thinking that, Gordon, and they're quite rightly, um, you know, to do that because if Celtic open that gap, it's not just the fact that going to twelve points, you've got such a massive goal difference as well. Rangers are at home today. It's under a new manager. He's had time. He's had four straight wins. Okay, he's criticised some of the performances. It's not up to standard he was. This is a massive game for him today. If he can pull off a result against a good Celtic side, then it brings him right back into it. There's no doubt. 
If he doesn't and Celtic get that win today at Ibrox, it's all over. As you know, Gordon, I won't have the word narrative, but I will have the word optics, and the optics would be terrific for Michael Beale. If he were to beat Celtic today, that would be five wins out of five games since he became Rangers manager. He himself has called them disjointed, given them five out of ten for performance against Aberdeen, and he's been honest about his side. However, if they beat Celtic today and the gap is reduced to six points and it's his first Old Firm game as Rangers manager, the optics are terrific. Can't disagree with the guys. I, I think the build-up to this one for Beal was get to the Celtic game without any drop points and see what happens after that. But it's all for nothing if they don't get a result today because like the guy said, if Celtic win today at Ibrox, the gap is too big for Rangers to call back because you've got to remember who you're up against it's not as if Celtic are going to go elsewhere and drop those points you're up against a formidable side who will then just kick on you would think so today is hugely important because Michael Beal can put a bit of a dent in Ange Postecoglou's season and if it's at six points and you've got another two of these games to go who knows what can happen in the nicest way possible there's a predictability about how Celtic go about their business Jim I don't think that that's necessarily up for debate how do you think Rangers approach this game I think Rangers are going to get after Celtic absolutely I mean, the guys have all said it you know Rangers have to win this match even a draw I mean it's, it's I mean, unbelievable uh, change in fortune uh, over the course of the season if Celtic dropped that many points and Rangers can get back into it so no for me it's, it's, it's a must win game for Rangers today uh, and, and they've went very positively with Sakala in the wide area and Kent um, they've got pace um, obviously Morelos you know I mean it took me such a long time to score his first goal against Celtic but again he is a goal scorer there's no doubt about it and um, Tillman if he can get involved higher up the pitch run about McGregor don't let him uh, dictate the tempo of the game then means will be very positive and also from set plays uh, both uh, Baricic and Tavernier are excellent and Rangers do have a bit more maybe um, you know height not, not a huge amount uh, you know but a little bit more than Celtic so yeah, I mean, but I think Rangers have to go for it. They have to give it everything uh, and show their fans, um, you know, that they're not giving up the fight. And the atmosphere, as you can hear, is cranking up. So the, there's no excuses. It's an absolutely perfect day for football. Ibrox looks immense. Uh, the playing surface is immaculate. Yeah, I mean, Gordon Diel, so much criticism for Giovanni Van Bronckhorst for the perception that he sat off Celtic and didn't take the game to Celtic in some of those meetings. They were at Celtic Park, um, to be fair. Will we see a, a significant change in yeah. approach today? 100%. I think the Rangers manager, I think Jim's right. I think the, 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 the information he'll be giving out is we need to get at Celtic. We need to be in the front foot. I think that's why he's picked the team. I think he's got good pace in there. You know, Sakala gives him that pace. Tillman's been playing very well and getting great reviews from the Rangers supporters and knocking a few goals in. Kamara is an excellent footballer. Lundstrom will get about the pitch because you have to. Because you know the energy, you know the movement, you know the pace that Celtic have got. So for Rangers today, especially under Michael Beale, where they need to win to go and sit off for me would be totally wrong they've got to get at Celtic go on I, the front foot and cause I problems. tell you the only one I'm surprised at I thought Arfield would have started for Rangers today <laughs> like Daz says you know Rangers have to take the game to Celtic and I think him in that role uh, replacing either Kamara or Lundstrom somebody who can get she goes I know we always chat about somebody who knows what the fixture's about and I think with Arfield you can tell that. So I'm surprised he's left him out. The front three, though, I don't think he had much choice in that. Cholak obviously isn't fully fit. Morelos might be carrying something, but worth a gamble. But Daz is right. In the wide areas, if Rangers are going to have any success, it's going to be using the pace and the directness of Ryan Kent running the Alistair Johnson. It is getting closer. Ibrooks is getting louder. The team lines are in. All the pre-match talk, all the pre-match debate is pretty much done. And kick-off is next. Clyde One Super Scoreboard with Call Robert Accident Repair. They'll collect, repair, and deliver your vehicle, providing a hassle free service. And now, just a quick note from our podcast sponsor, Lookers, the new name for Taggarts across Glasgow and the West. 
We are proud to announce that Lookers is now the new name for Taggarts. Taggarts has been part of the Lookers Motor Group for nearly 20 years and over time, being part of one of the largest multi-franchise dealer groups in the UK and Ireland has helped Taggarts to provide a great customer experience, value and choice to their customers across Scotland and that's something that will never change. And now, they've decided though to change the name above the door to move forward as one. You'll find the same great service and friendly faces you've come to know at their Jaguar, Land Rover and Volvo showrooms, working hard to give the best experience every time You can now browse and shop online For your next car at lookers.co.uk And choose from thousands of used cars In stock with home delivery available You can also discover the latest New car offers, book a test drive And book your next service online Although the name has changed above the door Everything else is staying exactly the same And you can still expect the same Great service and friendly faces when you visit In store. Lookers, the new name For Taggarts across Glasgow and the West as it happens and your reaction from five on the open line this is Clyde One Super Scoreboard very nearly showtime at Ibrox let's check back in with Jim Duffy and Andrew McLean yeah it's getting louder and louder in here inside Ibrox almost 50,000 Rangers fans and also that pocket of 700 or so Celtic fans over in the corner far to my left it may be bitterly cold here as well but a complete blue sky over Ibrox at the moment, the sun beating down on some of the supporters in the stand across from us as well. And there's always something special in the air around these New Year derby matches, Jim. For the home side, they're fighting for to really make it a title race, to try and get close to Celtic at the moment. For the away side, you know, they have that chance to take that 12-point lead. Ange Postacoglu saying the gap is irrelevant yeah. in a game like this, but that would be absolutely massive on the 2nd of January but if we look at the home side and we look at Michael Beale he's experienced these fixtures before not as the main man though how do you think he'll be feeling at the moment just five minutes ahead of kickoff? Yeah I think no, no matter who you are there's probably a bit of game Jeff. you know in Michael Beale's first, first game as a manager uh, in this fixture he knows how important it is the fans are playing a part of a terrific atmosphere it's a very poignant game for both clubs obviously and there'll be a minute's service to respect for the people who died in this disaster and obviously from Celtic side, um, Frank McGarvey, who I know very well, we have to send my condolences to the McGarvey family, who passed away there on New Year's Day. He was a, a fantastic player that really thrived and loved this type of fixture. So, you know, for, for fans, there's an emotional side of it as well. But in terms of the game coming up today, then, you know, there's two teams, I think, who are just made for open football. I think if you look at the, the game, I don't think either team. Is, is built for sitting back and, and protecting both teams I think of uh, both managers on their pick side who will go for it so I expect a really, a really really open game and, and I would be surprised if there's not a few goals in this game today Just how big a test of Michael Beale's Rangers team's credentials is this because we've seen them across four games so far they've had three narrow victories they've had that 3-0 win last week against Motherwell Michael Beale hasn't really been impressed by any yeah. of the performances he says the performance doesn't really matter today as long as they get all three points but how big a test is this to see how far they've come and how far they still need to go yeah I think this is the one game that if you get one out of ten for performance but got the result he wouldn't care but uh, listen the one thing he's done is he's in four games 12 points, uh, 12 points out of 12 you can't ask for too much more so he knows he's used the phrase himself was a work in progress but he knows his team have to meet their best today but you know, for, for me the Rangers players have to show a real pride a pride for the jersey they have to show what it means to their supporters uh, you know, you're playing against the champions you're playing against a team with a 9 point advantage that most in most people's eyes are favourites for the match so this is when you really want to show real character and, and get the biggest performance of your season so far from your players and I'm sure he's absolutely drilled that into his players yeah the noise and the tension cranking up another notch as the players make their way out onto the pitch at the moment I'll recap those starting 11 for both sides for Rangers Alan McGregor in goal for them the back four James Tavernier Connor Goldson Ben Davies and Borna Barisic the midfield three John Lundstrom Glenn Kamara and Malik Tillman Fashion Sakala and Ryan Kent in support of Alfredo Morelos up top for Celtic Joe Hart in goal for them Alistair Johnson making his first Celtic appearance at right back he's alongside Cameron Carter Vickers Carlos Starfelt and Greg Taylor at the back the midfield three Callum McGregor Rio Hatati and Matt O'Reilly the front three James Forrest Dyson Maida 
and he'll go. The referee for this one, John Beaton. The VAR, Willie Collum. We'll see how much their names are mentioned throughout today. The teams are out on the pitch and we are moments away from kickoff at Ibrox. Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Trade accounts available now. Call them today. And just like that, all the build-up is pretty much over. It is showtime at Ibrox between Rangers and Celtic. Is this a game that breathes new life into Rangers' title challenge, or will it be effectively over for many people across Glasgow and the West? We will find out across the next 90 minutes plus change, so strap yourselves in, because one thing that's an absolute certainty is drama. Hugh Keevans, give us your latest, your first, in fact, yes. hopeless prediction of the new year. When the Nokia alarm went off at 8 o'clock this <laughs> morning I was confident in the belief that Celtic would win 2-1 now the team news has distracted me and talk of a, a bug within the squad and players not feeling 100% has equally distracted me but I'm going to stick with 2-1 Celtic with less confidence than I had four and a half hours ago Wow, that was a oh. that was an interesting. Mm-hmm. T- I thought he was at least going to change his sure, prediction, yeah, but yeah. he's just less confident. Okay, he used, he used up five minutes here to tell his prediction. <laughs> he's he's with it. Mark Wilson, I'll be pretty simple here. I'm going to go Rangers one, Celtic three. Um, look, I'm going to go for the home side. I think they need the victory if they're going to keep this title challenge alive. They have to produce it today. Hughes touching on about Celtic with their illnesses and stuff like that. I'm not meaning an excuse, but I just feel that. Rangers could sneak it 2-1 Rangers uh, And before we do Get properly underway Hugh A minute silence At Ibrox uh, To remember uh, Those who lost their lives In the Ibrox disaster Celtic of course Making their own uh, Gesture as well After the sad passing Of Frank McGarvey Yeah well I'm old enough To have been a, a reporter On the day That the Ibrox disaster Took place I remember covering The first match back After Rangers took Time off to attend the funerals of those who went to a football match and didn't come home. And I also remember Frank McGarvey. I've known Frank for over 40 years. Uh, A lovely man, a terrific player for Celtic, scorer of 113 goals in total for Celtic, 100 of them in the league. And he endured a sad end to his life. And I wish the McGarvey family... All the very best because they have been terrific around their dad. Yeah, I have to echo that. Huge words there. Um, Frank McGarvey, got to know him just very briefly. Uh, what a guy he was. Very, very sad news and best wishes to his, his family and all connected. Yeah, sad day. Knew Frank very, very well. Um, I, I looked upon him as a, a, a close friend, Gordon. Really nice, nice guy and uh, sadly missed him. Got to admire, he was a fantastic footballer and a great goal scorer for Celtic and St Mirren. Um, so it's a sad, sad time. But the game is underway and all of that pre-match debate and discussion about who should play and how it'll go, it is over. So now we are underway at Celtic Park and we get a feel of how this one is going to shape up early on as Rangers come on uh, the attack. Ryan Kent signals Rangers' intentions. Yep. 14 seconds to get a shot on goal. I'll take that, Hugh Evans. Well, this is what Michael Beale wanted. You have to get in Celtic's faces and you have to show that you are a better side than the one who lost 4-0 and 3-0 prior to that. Uh, so it's a lively old opening. Celtic now on the front foot as well. Uh, it's the sort of game that I thought it would be you know that the, there was no quarter given or asked I made a caller on Friday night who said it was impossible for Celtic to lose this game well very early on you find out why the use of the word impossible is ill judged uh, Alistair Johnson then gets his first foray into Rangers territory but when John Lundstrom tries to volley the ball clear uh, Matt O'Reilly catches him on the top of the foot And it's a free kick to Rangers Good start from both there I mean, firstly from Rangers Worked it well, just went long Got the second ball, Kent No other thoughts in his mind but to have a shot and go But then Celtic, very composed as you would expect it To Alistair Johnson and to Forrest And well worked up to the other side So a lively old start We're only a minute and a half in Absolutely, now free kick Rangers mm-hmm. midway inside the half, uh, the opposition's half Rio Hatati and a few other Celtic players Crowding out Malik Tillman Yeah, I'm, I, I tend to agree with what Jim was saying at Ibrox. I think this could be an open game Two attacking lineups as well You go back to Alistair Johnston making his debut there It was good for him to get an early touch Because anybody will tell you Especially in this fixture 
get an early touch, be positive, get on the ball, get a bit of confidence, but good opening to the game. At Rangers, the free kick's quite a central one, so it's one of those that has to be a, a very special delivery, or perhaps a, a second contact, as they say, but Celtic do get it clear. You just get the feeling you might not be able to take your eyes off this one, Hugh Keevans. No, no you're absolutely right. It's so important for Michael Beale because he knows that if Celtic go 12 points clear, he will spend the rest of the season trying to keep morale going, but knowing that he doesn't have a team good enough, and therefore there will have to be a busy summertime mm-hmm. of... Incoming transfers But If Rangers win this match Five wins out of five For Michael Beale The complexion changes What's interesting about The the sort of tactical battle That we spoke about Gordon Everyone You Jim Duffy The Rangers fans Everyone assumes And expects Rangers To to go and and have a go at Celtic And go on the front foot If they don't get that right That's exactly what Celtic Want. Want you to do So it's going to be so important That Rangers use the ball better than they did against Motherwell at times Albeit they won 3-0 yeah. uh, And on the other side If Celtic do get the chance to nick it Can they then hurt Rangers? It's, it's going to be yeah, fascinating that's a, that, that is uh, the big question the Tactical battle You quite rightly say is gone Rangers fans will be desperate Especially at home They know it's a must win You know, go on the front foot That's a great saying Go on the front foot Get at them Don't let them get into their rhythm But if you're Celtic players They're so confident on the ball Especially middle to front They'll invite that Or pressure mm-hmm. They'll play through you And they'll obviously Get the quality to hurt you It's not a hugely High press To use the, the modern Term Mark Celtic <laughs> Were allowed to pass it in, in their penalty box Ryan Kent and Morelos Were relatively high up But you know It wasn't one of those Where they were squeezing Right into the penalty yeah. area To try and suffocate it You know what I think that's the right option From Beal You know Because what damage Is Carter Vickers or Starfield Going to do with the ball It's when you start pressing them And they pass round you And they release either Taylor Or Johnson on the other side That you're you're in trouble So I don't think the Rangers fans Will mind that Allowing the centre halves Just to have possession Backing off a bit And then pressing at the right time But Fair play to Borna Barisic Because Ben Davies Just fired a pass About 50 miles an hour Hip high And uh, Barisic eventually managed It's an interesting day for Davies as well Because he, He wasn't a it wasn't there Didn't take part at Celtic Park that day It was Sands that was there And I think he's had a mixed start To his Rangers career I think sometimes he looks like the defender we all thought And others he looks a bit shaky Oh it's given away by <laughs> Rangers And here goes Dyson Maida And he's through on goal And we've got an opener at Ibrox Goal flashes With Clyde Built Home Improvements Devastating by Celtic Devastating by Dyson Maida And with only four and a half minutes on the clock It's Rangers nil, Celtic 1 Picked up when he left off at Easter Road With a fine goal The one thing that Rangers could not afford to do Was be careless in their distribution of the ball And there's a shocking Morelos. pass Morelos not even looking but I'm not sure d- James Tavernier covers himself in glory No, he's got to but, do better But to be fair to Dyson Maida one thing in his mind when he picked up the ball And Tavernier is shocking there oh. But Dyson Maida has made a terrific job of that And that is a real slap in the face for Michael Beale He wanted them in Rangers uh, Rangers in Celtic's faces Instead, Rangers have early on sold the jerseys yeah. We have predicted this 30 seconds ago, Gordon Whoop. When we spoke about Rangers need to use it well Because if they don't, Celtic will Celtic pick them Celtic punish them, that's exactly what happened Looking at it from a Rangers point of view it's terrible It's terrible defending It's terrible from Morelos Even when he gives it a Tavernier's a favourite there He's a captain of Rangers He shouldn't be doing that And mm. Maeda The minute Maeda goes by Golson Like he's not there Because he's put out the game The way this boy's been playing The confidence he's got You knew that ball was end up in the back of eight. What a start for Celtic Do you know They, they used to say of Kay Ogo uh, That he's a natural finisher But Maeda is not well, the goal at Easter Road and this one today at Ibrox tell a different story, Mark. We we do this. We are we are fatalists in this part of the footballing world. Of course, there's a lot of criticism at Rangers. Do the positive bit from Celtic first. Yeah, well, the pressing, of course, because they're set up in a position where they can spring. You know, Maeda's in that position, anticipating a poor pass. You know, and he gets on to the end of it enough to put Tavernier under pressure. But I think what the guy said there When Maeda's bearing down in goal now He's not the most natural of finishers And he's got McGregor charging out He has to remain composed And he does And he slips it by What a start But terrible Terrible from Rangers Morelos But worst of all Was Tavernier yeah. Because he mm. could recover that situation And he dips his toe in 
and he gives Celtic the perfect start. Well, this is the thing, Gordon. It's only when you see it back, probably, you, you see the extent of, of Tavernier's involvement. Look, Morelos plays a, a poor and blind pass across the middle of the pitch, and Maeda intercepts it. You mentioned something about Tavernier being favourite. Not only is he favourite, he, he gets there, yeah. he gets right there, and he gets his foot on it, and he actually just under hits a pass. Um, back the way, really, really soft, isn't it? You can't take you can't take Morelos out of the criticism. He plays that blind pass. He's hoping that Tavernier, the captain, is going to control it. But I've got to say, Gordon, it's disappointing. Really, really, in such a, a game, the size of this game, the importance of the game. The one thing you're saying to yourself is, make sure we don't give Celtic anything easy here today because they have got players of quality. My Ada, for instance, I watched him at Easter Road. He misses an absolute sitter. Two minutes later, he plays a worldy, what a goal, confidence. He looked very good there, can you And it's the kind of thing, Mark, you've played in this fixture many times. It's the kind of thing that fans really, really don't like. like you can you can miss a chance. You can go through and you can... Oh, uh, when the yes. ball's flashed across the face, I think it will be a Rangers goal kick, though. Um, you can miss a chance. You can misplace a pass. You can miscontrol the ball. But what Tavernier does there, in the eyes of the fans, so I'm talking about perception, rightly or wrongly, is just about heart really yeah, and, and yeah. sort of getting there and doing your job properly you're right people don't like seeing that and for the people sitting in the stand who have not had the fortunate enough to see the replay it looks like he's dipped a toe in Maeda's just stronger it's only when the replay comes you actually see he's well in control of that situation and he just gets it all wrong he tries to be too cute and when you're five minutes into a game like this I don't think you can be too cute I know football's different these days and it's all about possession football. But when you're up against a pressing side like Celtic and you've got Maeda bearing down you, you just need to make sure in a situation like that. And he's gifted Celtic to go, but look, let's take nothing away from Maeda. The pressure on him running through 1v1 in that situation. How many times before have we seen that situation arise, particularly here at Ibrox, and McGregor just pulls off an he's outstanding save, but the finish... Is that good? He's also flashed one across the goal there, which mm. uh, Alan McGregor was having all sorts of difficulty with, but nobody really there to cash in. It was a terrific ball the across the The type of ball that Leela Bada likes, you yeah, even yes. some may say, if this doesn't go to, uh, to plan. Although, something that we uh, probably should remind you of, Mark, and I don't know how much of it, or, or who exactly was being referred to, but Juranovic, Ange Postacoglu said he has been struggling with illness, and he's okay. available if needed. Uh, and he said there are some others that have been feeling under the weather. So that, that might have played a part in this big forest uh, team selection yeah. that everyone's been debating pre-match. Well, it just goes to show you how strong that squad really is. When Juranovic is ill, you know, an international right-back comes in to make his debut. You know, when Jota and Abada, who have been so successful in this fixture, aren't feeling up to it, you bring a guy who's played, whatever, 20-plus games at this level um, in this atmosphere... Celtic are just so strong at the minute. He's I look not, at that bench as well. With it, Mark, is he? I'm, I'm watching him going up and down the right Johnson. hand side. Yeah, yeah, started try well. To, try to play. We won twos with Forest. They look like they're they're building up a good relationship there. Um, he looks like, um, and Mark will tell you, it's the greatest game in the world to play. In. He looks like so far he's enjoying the situation. Yeah, I must admit, Mark, you had a look at the teams coming out. You heard the noise. You looked around and realised that. Although you used to play in them You now spend your afternoons with us Yeah, uh, Your awful. mic was off at the time And you used a wee sweary word uh, to, to describe the <laughs> like, contrast of feelings It's nothing against you guys But walking at that tunnel And particularly this fixture at New Year Where the atmosphere's cranked up That wee bit extra It's just such a surreal experience And to go and particularly Ibrox And win and be part of a one inside there I don't think there's any better feeling in the world from a Celtic I, point of view. I don't really want to hurt your feelings. It's the first New Year. Um, <laughs> Johnson, no, I, I, Johnson and Taylor ain't worrying about you playing it. <laughs> the, let me tell but you I'm that pretty right sure Ange would have gave him videos. Eh, like, watch this right back. No, I don't and, think they would have, no. I'll sell your nerves. Think you two maybe could be nicer to each other in the New Year? <laughs> no, 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 no. He's still blaming me for this illness uh, that he's Everybody's got it now. Everybody's a spreader of it. I like to share it. in the well, studio. Let's go the other way then. Let's see if you two can be extra nasty to each other in 2023. <laughs> See how, that that, see how that plays out um, Celtic are also giving it away Mark, it is, yeah. it's one of those Because it's frantic, you know the noise Whether there is that bit of, of trepidation Celtic are giving it away um, It just they, they still just look more more dangerous than, well, than Rangers just are Just when you get that early goal, Gordon, this fixture You know, the nerves lift a wee bit You seem to play more relaxed I think Ange Postecoglou will be a wee mm. bit disappointed Knowing how high standards are 
how they're not keeping the ball like they would do any other yeah. game. But I will settle. There's only 11 minutes gone and you, know, but, so, you know it's like Gordon Sometimes a sliding tackle Even one that means nothing Gives fans a bit of a lift So Kala just made a real effort Really bust a gut to, to get there And slide in on Alistair Johnson It's just a throw in uh, to, to Celtic But then Rangers win the next throw in And the, the fans like that They like yeah, a bit they of they love it I, I remember sitting at a game years ago and, and Celtic were very poor at Ibrox And Scott Brown went into a flying into a tackle and all of a sudden, the reaction from the players round about him, and Celtic went on to win that game comfortably. Yeah, fans demand that. It's a passionate game, this. The pace that it's getting played at, you don't want to make mistakes. Tavernier has got to grow now. Yeah, and that's the Celtic press in full flow there, Mark. Back to McGregor under pressure from Kyogo. Gives it to Goldson to Tavernier, but then Maeda's on him and Tavernier hits it out of the pitch. McGregor's got to realise here, an experienced goalkeeper that he sees the Celtic front line coming at Goldson there and Goldson's backs mm-hmm. to him so he's put Goldson in a terrible position he's got to know just to go longer there I get Bill I was going to say play. what if he's told don't you dare go long under yeah, those circumstances be, but, uh, or you won't be in my team yeah. I'm just throwing I'm not saying that has happened but, but I, I, the... I get Michael Bill will want to play a certain way however when you've got a press coming at you that quick you're not doing your Defenders any favours I mean Gordon In the Ibrox pressure cooker Joe Hart's just came About 40 yards out To take a pass And yeah. play it into Celtic's midfield Look, They're very confident And Posta Coglu Encourages that Gordon Now Yes There's teams that make mistakes The top teams in the world Make mistakes playing that way But That's a belief That Posta Coglu That's the way he wants to play And he'll accept The responsibility If they do make mistakes But He's got so much trust uh, In his players um, And that's why He wants them to keep playing this is old fashioned frantic. This is the, you know, as Ooh, McGregor the two, puts one by. The two McGregors, yeah. Lock horns, Callum shoots, and Alan turns it round the post. I'm not sure. <laughs> he's shouting he's offside. And yeah. he is offside, but he's not interfering. He's. he's I don't um, know why McGregor's going make, for it. It's, it's going a bit wide, isn't it? Yeah, it's well it's wide. It's a corner to, to Celtic. Sorry, Hugh. The yeah. action never stops, but there well, we are. Well, you see, that, that, that just makes my point there. Celtic from the corner put the ball. Uh, out uh, careless with the execution of the corner. Uh, it's old fashioned frantic. You 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 cannot take your eyes off it, but it is a one hundred mile per hour whirlwind. Um, and it's <laughs> oh, Borna ba- oh wow, extremely poor from Borna Barisic. <laughs> oh, you do. And if the Irish stands haven't let him know that, Gordon, I'll be amazed. That was. Quite inexplicable Yeah yeah. You just bring pressure On to yourself um, He looked very nervous sir, Let me say um, And I think Celtic Can feed off that Tavernier goes in Just letting It's going to be a thing. Yeah no, uh, I don't well, think John Beaton Agrees no, It's going to be a foul To Rangers <laughs> Well how that's Why that's not a foul Is beyond human understanding But It's all part of the The fun of the fair This will just Go off The whole day long Hmm I mean Rangers do look on the other side I know Going a goal behind That's always You know an obvious thing to say But Celtic do look assured As the game's going on Rangers look nervy Morelos has went down there Claiming he's got a hand in the in the face I don't know if there was oh. much in that mm. uh, James Forrest with a really sloppy touch That goes out of play Ange Postacoglu's Urging a change in, in approach from Celtic there but Mark look, Goals are the most important thing That they change games And Celtic are definitely the better side Let's not be in any doubt about that But they have actually been sloppy And it, yeah. probably the Probably the goal puts a Puts a, a, a nice gloss on things Because Ange Postacoglu has got different types of standards You could see him there he, he wasn't particularly happy with that passage of play Yeah he obviously wants to keep things short And was it Taylor that tries to switch it, it there was Hattati, Hattati was it to, to Forrest um, He wants to keep things nice short Nice and simple And you've just seen the possession flash up there Celtic 70% so far But again Ange Postacoglu's standards He won't be happy at that We that, usually see it at about 80% And that was well it was Really really neat from Celtic Under pressure A lovely triangle But then when it goes to Forrest He tries to play a kind of longer ball With his left foot Gordon And it goes straight through to Alan McGregor Yeah, yeah you're expecting better I, I, I know what Mark's saying there About standards uh, Postacoglu But you go to Ibrox, you're 1-0 up after mm. 17 minutes, you'd be delighted. This was much better, this from Rangers. It was actually a nice piece of play to get out, and as it's <clears throat> Greg Taylor's taking a knock in the face, John Beaton points up the pitch, which means Celtic will get the chance to to regroup. That's mm. much, more, get away with one there. much more like it though, isn't it? Because Lundstrom plays that ball that you need to do. You need to, you need to yeah. try and play that aggressive pass 
through the lines, as they say. And um, Tillman then joins in, Morelos. And it's probably just the cross from Barisic is a little bit high. And uh, Sakala yeah. maybe just catches Greg Taylor. It's more encouraging for Rangers, Gordon. I think if you're looking at the game, I know it's early, 17 minutes. You've not seen a lot of Tillman, Ken, you know, Sakala. You're looking at him to run now. Taylor may have a problem here because I'm sure did he not go off and win uh, yeah, but this, is, no, this is a whack in the face oh, that was a, a, whack in the face, was a so tight hamstring I think I it's just his eye I know he had a oh, little oh, bit oh, of no, hold on actually mm, yep. you could be yeah, right that's, that's his red art there yeah. yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think f- I think if you're right you've stumbled upon that by accident you yeah, think so that's why I'm getting no credit <laughs> no right. credit okay, whatsoever I'm not expecting any <laughs> I'll tell you we're watching that finish again and McGregor makes himself so big right and uh, he's a striker I'll always tell you I'd like to get in the angle because it gives you better he's going straight at McGregor there makes his cell big McGregor's a quality goalkeeper but this guy is playing with so much confidence now then you're just well, thinking that's going to I was going to say what a time he's having just now because he's came in for some criticism in his Celtic career you know it's not always easy on the eye but when you take his World Cup into consideration, then when he came back and his performance mm. at Easter Road, he misses the sitter, of course, at Easter Road uh, the other night and then scores an absolute world eh? When we talk about setting the tone, Morelos has gone down a couple of times yeah. and John Beaton's having absolutely none of it, Hugh. Well, you know, Morelos does tend to, to play like that. Um, he's obviously still got the, the goal in his mind. It's his fault to begin with. Uh, I just wonder, Taylor, back on... But I wonder just if he's 100% fit mm. after think, yeah. Easter Road. I think we need to know whether that delay was head knock related or hamstring related because mm. the physio had a little f- <laughs> feel of the leg but it didn't seem to last too long as Kyogo goes in behind. I think they're hoping a flag yeah, goes yeah. up from the home dugout and it does indeed yeah, arrive. Good from him. Good Early line. impressions, uh, Johnston at right back, are very good, Gordon. He looks like a lad that's been coached well. Um, you know he's looking very <laughs> comfortable on the ball. Young age, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Greg Taylor down. Oh, oh. Told Greg you. Taylor is down. Alfredo yeah. Morelos for some reason doesn't like it that Greg Taylor's down, but I assume it's just a. Well, that's the thing. Why is Morelos getting hamstring? And John Beaton is standing over this. Why is he not telling Morelos just to clear the area? Mm. Taylor's obviously injured. He's probably looking at going off here. I don't understand. Yeah, he is. Well, I don't Josip know. Juranovic is getting ready. You don't like it, Hugh. You don't like the word narrative. Baritin, the yeah. narrative surrounding Josip Juranovic is quite something. Goes to the World Cup, gets to the latter stages. Is he getting a big money move? Has he played his last game for Celtic? Doesn't feature the other night. Doesn't feature again today. He's apparently ill. And now, 20 minutes in, he's going to be brought on out of position to help Celtic try and win this game. In the director's box, they'll be twitching, uh, hoping that nothing happens to him. Uh, talk of £20 million transfers and so on and so forth. Uh, some of the best clubs in the world named in connection with Josip Juranovic. But I am absolutely convinced that uh, that Greg Taylor was not 100% mm. going into is this Burnaby game. Is Burnaby on the bench? Burnaby's on the bench, yeah. yeah that's, that's interesting. Is that a slap in the face to Burnaby? Do you know where you are in the food chain if well, that happens, Mark? If, if you yeah. are you know, someone who was with the team third in the World Cup, then I don't think it's a slap. He's not face. left back. I I wouldn't be happy if I was Bern to be sitting there. I would not be happy seeing a right back who your manager's already says is a bit under the weather going on at left back. Never mind if he's played uh, in the latter stages of the World Cup or not. Um, I, I I I can understand it, Mark. I think that Bernabe's new into Celtic career. You're playing a guy that was <laughs> he's not as new as Alistair Johnson. No, no I know, but I he's know. playing his natural position. Um, I but think so. Would so would be a little bit. My point is, I would rather point's brought, rubbish. Yeah, <laughs> right away. You're on a bit we'll just John. stop it there. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would rather have brought you're on a bit John at left back just now, one and one nil, than bring on Bernabe. Yeah, but why is I think the question? Because I think he's a better footballer. He's a better defender. Juranovic yeah. made his debut in a yeah, yeah. game at, at left back. Yeah, so but presumably, the reason for that was because Celtic didn't have any. But at the same time, I think he's a player who can handle that yeah. either side of the park. Anyway, um, it's a big, it's a huge ball. Greg Taylor has been one of Celtic's best players this season. Uh, I mean, defensively, you've seen his worth there just at the back post with Sakala, but on the ball and attacking wise, he's been excellent. And you're taking him out again 19 minutes in. Okay, you're 1 0 up, but it's a huge ball. Oh, That's really play. good play. I think Hattati. it was uh, Hatati. Kyogo came and helped him out at first, didn't he, to try and nick it off Tillman in the first instance. 
then Hitati cleans up some of the the mess because it is scrappy. It's definitely scrappy in the middle of the pitch, um, but we've not seen much uh, in the way of attacks recently, and not too many Rangers attacks at all. If We're, I was if I was Michael Beale, a bit, a bit disappointed. You've not asked any questions whatsoever of Joe Hart. Um, oh, and here goes Maida. Yeah. He's run James Tavernier. It's in the box, and I think it does come off Matt O'Reilly. Um, Connor Goldson slid in. Alan McGregor's unhappy with something. That maybe doesn't he's always, happy, always yeah. tell the, the story. Unhappy. It's great play from Maeda. Maeda knows he's got the beat in a Tavernier right away. Uh, for me, he's a defender. I think you've got to shut that off more. The right hand side for Tavernier. Just take a step because you know he's got pace on you, but he's allowed him to go on the outside him. If I was Tavernier, I'd be trying to show him the inside and saying to Kamara or Lundstrom get over here and help me because he's going through a tough period just mm. now in this opening 20 minutes is that a nightmare especially when it's pace related if you're a fullback, you've done it many yeah. times if you know somebody's can just knock it past you well you've got to think how, how you stop that you know what do you do do you drop off five yards and let Maeda have it in front of you well he's he the lad in front of you uh, come and give I'm, I'm asking one of my midfielders mm. to, yeah. to step in and I'm trying to show him inside and what? being obvious a shutting outside mm-hmm. off so Maeda has is nowhere that, else uh, to go is that easy to do and genuinely asking if, if, you know if you're Rangers all this pre-match talk about taking the game to mm. Celtic and all that stuff when Celtic move it like that is it a lot to ask a Rangers midfielder, a wide man, to then get back in yeah. front of Maeda? Yeah. Can you do both at the same I, time? I, like or, I was going to say, it's not easy to do. Because but. Th- this is what we discussed right on Friday night. I know ego comes into this game and I know everyone, the bravado and we take the game to them and we we are not scared of anyone. But but do, do you need to sometimes think, right, okay, Celtic are in a better place yeah. than us and we need to first mm. of all stop them? You have to take into account who you're up against. And if you're Tavernier and you've seen the start Maeda's had, then you need to take into account that this guy's on it today, he's quicker than me, how can I affect this? And that might be just saying to whoever's inside him, if it's Kamara or Lundstrom, for the next five to ten minutes, shuffle over and help me out. And Mark, see, I, my, see, my worry about you're saying, Mark, as a fullback, you'll show him inside. That's what happened in against Hibs. They showed them inside and <laughs> showed them inside a bit too I much. Know, that, so that, was, that was an yeah. extreme example, so, wasn't it? So you've got to you've got to make sure everybody's working in partnership with each they're, other. They're, they're showing them inside, and then there's everyone running out the way, way and, yeah, and letting you hit shoot, the ball yeah. and goal. Um, offside flag up again. There, I think was it James Forrest. James Forrest just yeah. came across. I think I think if you're Ranger, you've got to be looking at one or two more of your so-called big players trying to influence this game. Uh, you look at Hatati, McGregor, O'Reilly in the middle of the park, they look very comfortable indeed. You know, I've not seen anything really. Tillman, Sakal has not had a chance to go and run at people. Morelos is in, he's more fighting with, you know, Carter Vickers and trying to get the ball played up and get people playing off him. But and then of course, I think it's Celtic's movement. I think it's terrific. That's really good from Ben Davies, though. Steps out, robs Matt O'Reilly. Celtic rob it back. Um, and I think John Lundstrom probably will be penalised for being a bit too close what, to Matt O'Reilly in that occasion. The space Celtic have it sometimes. I mean, Juranovic here, he's just on. A right footer playing at left back. He gets it in his left foot. Now, if I'm a Rangers player, I'm pressing that all day long. They stand off him. He then plays it to McGregor, who has no one within five yards of him. He turns, plays it to Johnson, and Celtic are mm. out the other side. Nobody within five to ten yards. Just out of curiosity, and whether this is a conscious decision from Celtic or whether Rangers did well to, to stop it, that free kick in the middle of the pitch, Celtic, that was about 20 seconds, 30 seconds before Celtic took it. You know, they they, they usually like to go a bit faster, Gordon. Yeah, they like to um, play very quick football. You know that that's a style they play, Gordon. And here comes James Forrest just to the corner of the box, but the cut back. You could see what he was trying. Yeah, for Matt I think that's a pure ball. That's never on for yeah. me there. Yeah, I, I mean Forrest is particularly good at that, and Ange Postecoglou works a lot in that. But I don't think he's close enough to the byline to cut that back. He's almost playing that square across the eighteen yard line, and Rangers cut it out. All blood and thunder, uh, and it continues, but. Joe Hart remarkably has nothing to do other than come out and field the ball. Some, sometimes an overlooked part of a, of a dominant attacking team, Mark, the way, the way Celtic do what they just did there. So as Rangers look to break, you know, Kyogo gets in about it. It's a foul. It's not a bad foul. It's nowhere near enough to get Kyogo in trouble. But sometimes you just you have to do that and that stops your opponent yeah, I picking think you off. Any successful team have that about them. 
that cynicism about them to stop attacks and just disrupt the flow of the game when you lose it Celtic are very good at it and you're right Gordon it does go overlooked not only in this game but in other games that they will take a fill to, to help the team get back and I'm sure that trickles down for the manager where, uh, see where the argument is as much as you're saying if you're a Rangers fan we've got to be on front foot cause Joe, oh. Joe Hart causing his own problems wow. uh, Joe Hart what is that still uh, in? the ball's got to in play that's still oh my in. goodness huge chance for Rangers and it's oh, hit the I post see. and it comes back out and it's blocked oh. <laughs> Joe Hart I've said it before and I'm not saying anything that uh, I don't it, earnestly believe Joe Hart is hopeless with the ball at his feet he just cleared the ball off of Morelos very tough to tell if that mm. was out what would have been interesting because to be fair the linesman's on the opposite side so that plays out if it ends up in the back of the net then oh. VAR would take a look and decide whether yeah. the ball was, was out of play or not well after that I'm just watching and you could look at Ken goes off the post Staffel throws his body at that yeah. and, and and saves a goal let's be honest he, he bails his he bails his keeper out I was just about to compliment how good Celtic were defensively 15 goals against in the league they've been absolutely brilliant and Joe Hart nearly throws him a life I think he uh, he also makes a save it's an outstanding cle- save yeah he cleans up his own mess yeah to really extent. good save he, he puts it onto the post but he is hopeless with the ball at his feet the thing is it's, a lot of it does come down to oh and there's a bit of a the handbags are out a bit here It was initially a tackle from Alistair Johnson on Lundstrom He got a lot of the ball He also got a bit of John Lundstrom uh, And then it's all sort of kicked off thereafter I don't know how it's managed to kick off It looked like it was settled After the actual initial foul um, You know, it cuts away and then it cuts back And there's all sorts going on between Barisic and McGregor there um, But that... It, I was a howler from Joe Hart See when you look at it From a Rangers point of view What an opportunity Has been passed is up that, Is that the frustration from, If you're Ange Postacoglu Because that may set the tone For a, for a period of Rangers pressure Or whatever Because that's the way Lifts Momentum the goes yeah. And really up until then you know, Rangers, nothing Rangers yeah. hadn't created much You shoot yourself in the foot I mean to be fair though Good pressing by Morelos yeah. But it still looked like One that Joe Hart Should have Certainly dealt with a bit differently. Yeah, I think I think it gives you a wee bit more step if you're Rangers, knowing that there's maybe an opportunity coming. That would have been a big, big goal for them, especially getting into the half hour mark, because uh, they've not really, you know, they've not threatened at all. But uh, as you say, Gordon, it's good from Morelis. He goes and closes his heart down. He's too slack for me, but makes up for it. Another chance. It falls to Kent on the edge of the box, and he's got just beyond Johnson. But Carter Vickers helps him out. This is Rangers coming back into this. There thing. you go. That's what you want. If you're a full back and you know you've got somebody with pace that can go by you, you want somebody the next man. And Carter Vickers realizes the danger's there. Gets across. Good play from Kent to skip by Johnson, but Carter Vickers there to block. It's as if you, you know, you you called it correctly, Gordon, when you said that the Joe Hart mistake has ignited Rangers. Mm-hmm. Uh, did Tavernier's corner hit Callum McGregor Who was like the, th- the the man closest to him Which is always a real frustration uh, If a you're a fan or a coach McGregor's not even in the penalty box He's the one that's out to protect the short corner I think it did clip him Maybe I'm wrong uh, And Ryan Kent looks to, to come again And cause some trouble dancing inside Something that Michael Beale likes This is the best phase of the first half for Rangers yeah. they, they, They're they now looking as if they believe They can get an equaliser Absolutely And here comes Sakala Carter Vickers c- cuts it out Yeah um, It's not a little yet, spell though. this for Rangers Yeah And here it goes again And Callum McGregor Got his feet oh, all wrong oh, Celtic just can't Clear the lines Good shout But there's Joe Hart Got to say Just moments before that Great ball into the box Was at Kent And Starfelt With a big header Because it was right Into the middle of the Celtic box You would fancy Mm. Goldson Or one of your bigger guys To attack that But important header Nonetheless I think The thing that will frustrate And I can imagine Jim Duffy He'll be frustrated Watching it with the coach's hat on Gordon When you're talking about That Joe Hart Mistake Sometimes well we know Ange Postacoglu wants them to play that mm-hmm. way if you take chances if you try a pass and it doesn't come off but it just looked like speed of thought he actually he had a chance to, to get rid of it and he just, yeah. just stayed on it far too uh, long uh, yeah it was just bad play from him uh, he took too long uh, Morelos obviously knew that and got closer to him and, and seen an opportunity to try and steal and mm. that's exactly what he did but look that'll not stop Joe Hart from the next no, one of course not. he'll do the exact same because he's encouraged to do that He's made that mistake, but the, the most important thing for Celtic and Joe Hart is they didn't get punished for it. 
Uh, Celtic's passing hasn't yeah. been great Sliced out of play That one by Josip Juranovic Who's playing left back Remember Greg Taylor Had to go off After about 20 minutes uh, So very much Celtic still uh, In front on the scoreboard Dominating things To a point But definitely Rangers now uh, Looking much Much better Yeah they've been Galvanised by The Joe Hart mistake And what followed And they, they obviously want The grandstand finish To the, the first half They need that equaliser Don't want Celtic Going in at half time a goal to the good and then having that uh, array of talent on the bench possibly some of them coming on second half I, I don't think Celtic will be too phased with us they'll drop them off a little bit you know that if they can go and win possession back they can hurt you but you know, Barisic try though, down, and, yeah. and a, that will frustrate a life out you. you you're a big defender of Barisic in those situations yeah. Gordon the quality of delivery if you're up against a team that isn't going to give you that many chances you get a bread and butter cross in line with the penalty spot, yeah, and you put it out behind the goal. As, as we've seen one the other uh, week there, Gordon, when he put one in for Morelos, and it's a terrific ball for a striker. And strikers feed off them, love them, but he's got to take more care. Celtic's just starting to be sloppy here. Well, Juranovic in particular, we can maybe cut him a bit of slack. He's had a tough time. He's been ill. He's been brought on out of position, but he's he has. He's indeed given it away a couple of times. Mm. And, and particularly in that style Gordon where you're on the attack Katati's made a move your midfield's wide open you cannot afford to give that ball away and he's lucky that Rangers were just a wee bit hesitant once but they get into the final third not often you can say this about Celtic but look rattled at the moment do you know uh, who I think's taking up great positions at the back Starfield oh. you know he's blocking things he's reading the, he comes in for a bit, bit of criticism but as a partnership with Carter Vickers they're very solid and they've got a lot of faith in they too and the goalkeeper behind so as I say Celtic I, as much as Rangers are getting a bit and they're giving mm, away but it's sloppy, been a while since Celtic kept the ball Gordon it's been yeah. a while now it seems Juranovic three times since he came on he just yeah, needs to settle down a bit Yeah, I, mean, I think they need Maeda going down here and Tavernier obviously uh, doing his job there Yeah it just better. goes out of play I yeah. think <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I like <laughs> By the way <laughs> If you're Tavernier You're <laughs> thinking Please <laughs> go out Please because go out of play the, Because It looked like it was going to go Miles out yeah. But Maiden nearly, <laughs> nearly kept in Oh I've been there before Get the, out ball The Joe Hart error there It saved us our, Perhaps our first real drama As well Hugh Because The ball might have been out of play And we, you would only find out VR would then only look at that If the ball ended yeah. up in, in the back of the net well, Ange Postacoglu this morning in newspapers expressing his fear that VAR could have an influence on the game. Corner uh, Rangers. But it hasn't had an influence so far. What's influencing the game right now is that Celtic have appeared to be rattled. It's Rangers' best phase of the first half. Now they've got a corner kick and it's another test of the Celtic defence. But Juranovic since coming on... Uh, has looked bewilderingly bad When you've taken a, a, a hold of the game just now Which Rangers have Especially after the Joe Hart incident You've got to try and You know Make this work for you You've yeah, got to try and get back in the game We've seen set pieces Be a problem uh, In this fixture before Conor Goldson's had success from them before He's the one that gets closest is it uh, I think Malik Tillman's Got a good jump in his okay. time at Rangers He was in there uh, And has gone out for a goal kick I think that's Tillman. a great ball I yeah. think that's a great ball from Barisic Into the area for Tillman to run onto And Tillman just gets it all wrong there Because all he needed to do was just Get the slightest of touches Because Joe Hart was out searching for it um, It's a bit easy If you're, if you're Michael Beale, Gordon Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they tried to press Celtic from a, from a Celtic goal kick Celtic do eventually put it out for a throw-in in the Rangers half But I mean, Morelos, he's there But he's not really doing much yeah you can't if you're going to press you've got to go together I've got to be a trigger point where everybody's closing off but that was just too easy for Celtic to get out that, that, that will disappoint him and I think that's what he talks about after the game sometimes saying look we're not the standard yet that he's looking for Deep Morello says Mark he's, he's almost like a, a defensive midfielder there the position he's taken up for some reason and of course that's where the ball broke to him for the goal and he, he plays it across the face so Obviously it's somewhere Where the manager Maybe want them to drop into For some reason I don't know why You'd want them back there Especially when you're at home You're surely wanting somebody To affect the centre half For Celtic Since the day Ange came in Gordon Deal, mm. We've spoke about The full backs coming in the mm. pitch The phrase inverted full backs Made its way into The Scottish football dictionary Great ball. Sit, Hold on Hold that thought Because Celtic are in the box It's flashed across Goldson comes McGregor's there 
and he Google collects. Um, am I right in saying though, just Celtic's joy actually seems to come from Alistair Johnson staying wide, wide. today rather yeah. than coming in the pitch? Well, he, he's just in the, the building. Go, well, he's been there for a few weeks, obviously, but um, he knows the position the right back. I've been very impressed with, with Johnson. I've got to say, down the right hand side, mm-hmm. he looks he looks a really because Rangers good play narrow, don't they? We know that yeah. it's the fullbacks that provide. The, I, I feel like because we're watching it on TV, the ball will roll out near Alistair Johnson. And I'm then expecting the Rangers player to kind of be there, but mm. but they're not. I wonder if this is Ange Postecoglou tweaking something because he knows Rangers are narrow in there. Or I think I think it will be, and I think that you get a feel for a game as well where the space is. He looks to be linking up oh. with Forrest as well. Uh, I'm just watching Hatati's movements. Absolutely unbelievable. James Forrest. Oh, oh and it's a bit of a miss from Kyogo. It comes to Maeda, edge of the box. Hatati blocked. Big chance that big for chance. Celtic Really big chance Kyogo yet to score In a game against Rangers of course And uh, that's one of the aspects of the, the afternoon That were most intriguing But he didn't do his best there It was but a classic move from Celtic That you're used to seeing You yeah. know, Getting it wide, getting it to Forest, Good cut back And fresh air swipe yeah. from Kyogo Comes to Maeda then blocked uh, Maybe a bit more encouragement If you're James Tavernier For the first time he, he does stop Maeda in his tracks As he tries to uh, to run at him Celtic seem to have weathered that uh, relative storm from Rangers. They're back to losing their composed selves again. Just looking at Hitati, everything that comes to him just looks so easy. Mm -hmm. You know, his first touch is always spot on to get him moving in the right direction. His pass usually follows up with a perfect pass as well. What an outstanding player he is. And he's he's reverted back to his favoured midfield role after starring at right back for a couple of games. I appreciate this as a comment, maybe... More relevant to that February game where he came in and, and was a real star, um, Mark. But do, does, does it show you the importance of you know identifying the right character? It would be easy to to look at Hatati coming from Japanese football and think that he might shrink in this environment and it might be a bit of a shock. And it's the absolute opposite, as you say. Take any stride. Everything that's been presented in front of him in a Celtic shirt, he's he's made it look easy. And forget he's he's still a young man as well. Um, in the big games he usually turns up though now you might only get 60 minutes or 70 minutes out of him but within that hour he puts in some shift and his quality is, is unrivaled in that in that side so I mean a huge he's just grew into a huge player for Celtic today he's doing everything we ease oh that's really nice from Matt O'Reilly skips away on that right hand side but the cross is headed away by James Tavernier and it does force Celtic backwards. Yeah, it was good defending from Rangers, good play from O'Reilly down the right hand side. Um, but these sort of balls, you're hoping for Rangers that your centre backs and defenders will take care of that because there's not a lot of height in there. It's got to be a driven one for me. But uh, Celtic start to look a bit composed again as they put it out the park. <laughs> yeah, it's Juranovic that can't keep it in, but I think we'll um, Starfield. I'll, we'll ask Starfield some questions that time. He fires it towards Juranovic, who couldn't keep it in. Starfelt gets in trouble when he overthinks things when the ball's at his feet Starfelt is a top player I think when the ball is in the box and he has to react instinctively Ooh, that's really slack from Matt O'Reilly and Postacoglu you just get the feeling he will be delighted that his team are in front Gordon mm-hmm. but they, they can use the ball better than this yeah I, I, I picked up in what Jim said before the game I, I, I watched them against Tibbs and I thought O'Reilly probably had one of his quietest games now they're not doubting the guy's a terrific footballer and I totally agree I thought Aaron Moy would have been a bit disappointed to be left out because I thought he was brilliant at Easter Road but uh, Celtic coming forward yeah, here comes Celtic it's Josip Juranovic so oh. slides it to Dyson Maida whose cross is so bad that it nearly goes over Alan McGregor's head and into the box D- did not need to s- throw a left foot at that Mark Wilson ah, that's where he just lacks a bit of composure because Celtic worked it so well out to him and the afternoon he's having, you think just take, take a, a touch, touch yeah. and, and go out to have an ear. It come inside, you know, and have a shot or go outside and cut it back. He just tries it first time and he lets Rangers off the hook. We saw replays of that Kyogo chance, Gordon. Mm-hmm. And he gets, I mean, it's some. this is where you talk about stats, you know, and how they can be misleading. That doesn't go down as a shot on goal for Celtic. Certainly not a shot on target. He misses the ball completely. But when you see it back, you realise just how big a chance that is. He's, what, 10 yards out, gentle pace on the ball. And um, mm. corner to Rangers uh, gen- Gentle pace on the ball Right in front of goal And misses it completely His eyes must have lit up Gordon um, Especially with the form That he's been in um, He's scoring yeah, I think goals Is the offside well. flag yeah, the off offside, against yeah. Morelis. Morelis, yes 
Um, um, yeah. Or is it corner stand? Well, no, the, the corner the, does. The, the flag never went up at any stage. Well, it's that it's that one similar to the Livingston debacle. It's you know, did, did he play that deliberately? Is is Morelos challenging for the ball? That sort of stuff. Anyway, the corner comes in. Ooh, bit of a chance like, for Rangers, you know. Six choice. yards out. Morelos heads it over the bar. I think that's a big chance. He's got to do the, that. He's I got think to the ball's terrific man. there from Tavernier. He gets above Cal is it McGregor? Juranovic he gets above. Oh, you'd fancy Morelos there. Seven yards out. You know, not, big not chance. Not even fancy. I think he's got to hit the target. Those that's are the, the ones, question. Mark, if that had Gone in. <laughs> that, that, those yeah. are the ones that, as a defender, oh, hold on, no, hold that thought because oh, it's a great tackle from Malik Tillman. Just as Hatati was about to pull the trigger on the edge of the box, Celtic do still have it. Juranovic way Oof. over the bar. Yeah, what a tackle that was from Tillman because Hatati just in his left foot, it looked like he was just going to slide Maeda in, who was in space, gets enough on it to stop him. But end to end there I mean Morelos should score at one end Celtic maybe should have been quicker In the final pass Something the other end. that uh, Tillman's been criticised For not doing Gordon mm -hmm. Is that encouraging to see him Starting to develop yeah, but, Going but, back the way But yeah of course He's got to do both sides of the game But I think Rangers fans Would be more interested In getting him in the ball sure. he's, get, he's decent in the air He's in he's a good, good forum oh, He's really been well scoring done. goals Really well done from Kyogo Kyogo seems to have this ability, Mark. Um, it's a shame that Matarelli hasn't been equally as impressive there in, in giving it away. Kyogo seems to have a, a bit of a knack for sort of improvising at times. You look at the touch the other night at Easter Road, correct me if I'm wrong, I've never seen too many players do drills to control the ball yeah. outside of the thigh. At that time, he sort of had to contort his body and, and flick it back into play. Just a great football and brain. Using every part of his body there and he flicks it inside. O'Reilly gave it away though. O'Reilly's not had the best first half. I've got to say and maybe backs up with some of the callers what they said the other right, night uh, Ryan Kent's gone out to the right hand side for Rangers and it's looking to try and pay off but he's given it straight to Carter Vickers but he can't get rid of it and this is oh. very sl sloppy as Morelos curls one it's the length past of time the post. that Carter Vickers takes you know that, I mean how did, can you possibly think you've got that length of time uh, but it's a poor effort actually yeah. from Morelos isn't it yeah I, I don't think that's a bad shout if Kent has went out to that side I don't know if they've changed back now because you know he's not getting much out of Johnson but Juranovic hasn't looked comfortable at all on the ball so there you go he just passes it straight yeah. out of the pitch again he, he values diminishing every game he touches <laughs> I, the ball I, I, think <laughs> it, I think the parts of his game has been very sloppy from both sides it has it really has you're expecting more especially with the importance of the game I, I saw, think both I saw managers a stat will be from the, I, I saw a stat from the Rangers review on Twitter pop up there saying that Rangers passing accuracy is 69% which for people who don't keep an eye on these things is very low yeah. Uh, very low again. I mean, and I, don't get me wrong I don't know what Celtics is I don't know if it's vastly superior because they have given it away also um, but if you're at continue. if you're at home Gordon and mm. we mentioned about what Celtic can do to pick you off you're going to need to keep the ball better than that if you're Michael Beale yeah and um, that's a better ball from Barris it's a good quality ball from the angle there left peg he's asking people to go and attack it Rangers desperate to get that goal at half time because what a difference that does walking in in that tunnel and getting in the dressing room it's a different team talk from Michael Beale but Celtic mm. they're very very good in defence uh, Ryan Kent's back on the left he's trying to involve Kamara and Barisic and as that one comes in it might just fall you know but Malik Tillman gets it wrong and hacked away by Dyson Maida I'd agree with Daz there up until this moment Celtic have dealt well with those cross balls you look at Carter Vickers and Starfell and even Juranovic getting that final little touch from the latest Barisic cross defended their box brilliantly I think they had to do that last time yeah I think that's right do you think that's a side of Celtic's game that is underappreciated yeah I really do um, I think Starfield is a good a good defender when it comes to that I think he, he picks up good well, positions more defending to do here because Tavernier's ball is deep and I think it will be a corner off Hatati, Hatati at the back post two minutes to be added we've already played almost one minute of that bearing in mind it is a minimum of two minutes I thought I'd be disappointed if I was the Rangers manager watching Tavernier I think he's got better quality than that he's got a good position he's under no pressure He's got great quality, we know that. He's got to put better balls in there. Well, this is possibly the last chance of that half. Here comes James Tavernier's corner, and it's past the post again. It's Morelos. He's not known to really get on the end of, of them as such. You're maybe expecting Goldson, but that's twice now. He's getting the better of Juranovic. He maybe does lean on him. Uh, I'm not sure if VAR would have 
uh, had a, a look at that or not but it goes past the post in any case again and I think he should do better there Juranovic certainly struggling in all aspects of the game set pieces included twice he's let Morelos away twice I think Morelos should do better with his header he should at least get that one in target and a disappointing end to the half for Rangers yes it will be pretty much the last action unless something drastic happens with this kick from Joe Hart it's just a bit of a pinball and Maeda just blooters it <laughs> I'm not sure if they use that I phrase in, in, in Japan um, and I, I don't expect that two minutes to be stretched much more Borna Barisic is on the ball the half time whistle goes let's speak to Jim Duffy and Andrew McLean at Ibrox Rangers nil, Celtic won the half-time score at Ibrox. The visitors deservedly ahead in this one with Dyson Maida's early goal, the difference at this stage. It came just five minutes in and it was the last thing Michael Beale would have wanted. Alfredo Morelos played a risky blind pass across his own half. James Tavernier got to it but played a really soft pass back the way and there was Dyson Maida to pounce. He skipped by Conor Goldson before calmly finishing past Alan McGregor for the opener. After that, there was a low Callum McGregor shot that didn't look too troubling but Alan McGregor made sure to get down low and turn that one round the post. Celtic had been dom dominant better in pretty much every area but they almost gifted Rangers a goal in the 28th minute. Alfredo Morelos closing down Joe Hart. He cleared the ball or tried to anyway. Alfredo Morelos blocked it. It spun up in the air. Morelos kept it in at the byline. He cut it back to Glenn Kamara. It then went on to Ryan Kent at the edge of the box but Joe Hart made amends by tipping that shot onto the post. Rangers had a good five minute spell or so after that couldn't really create anything though while they had the ball in those areas Celtic were then back on top after that Kyogo should have done better when he took a fresh air swipe at the ball in the box when it was cut back to him two final chances for Rangers at the end of the half both headers from corners both from Alfredo Morelos one going over and then one of the final actions of the first half he headed one just wide as well not a game full of quality but Celtic have certainly had the better of it the half time score at Ibrox Rangers nil, Celtic 1 and Jim Duffy alongside me the reason Rangers are behind is the story of their game so far they've been sloppy and Celtic you know they've been at it at times and they've managed to take advantage yeah well three of the more experienced players particularly this uh, fixture were all capable of, uh, of the goal obviously Morelis played the square pass uh, Tavernier not been aggressive enough and really getting through I mean especially on the match ideal time to set the tone go and win the ball clear it and you know you, you, you can you can make contact with the player as well and then Conor Goldson to me just made it easy for Maeda take nothing away from Maeda his anticipation uh, his pace his acceleration and then that composure to finish absolutely fantastic um, from Dyson Ma Maeda uh, and after that Celtic been in cruise control for 30 minutes uh, you know, although they weren't playing their best the guys in the studio were saying giving a few passes away uh, but they still were, were totally dominant in the game and, and Joe Hart was absolutely untroubled and I think that would be a disappointing thing for the Rangers fans and for Michael Beale up until almost 30 minutes with Joe Hart inexplicably dis decided to take an extra touch on the ball and then with that little ricochet came out then he, I think he produced a great save from where we went although it was a fantastic save on the post but then Rangers after that the last 15 minutes had a few efforts uh, I think the last one with Morelos because it's strange when Gerardi was on uh, it wasn't Greg Taylor I'm sure initially would have been picking up uh, Morelos but Gerardi seems to be the job I'm a little bit surprised because Alistair Johnson I didn't realise at all he looks about 6-1 something like that so you've got Johnson you've got O'Reilly Celtic have got more than enough in there to pick up Morelos but I think it's a difficult one for both managers because Ange Foster Congo would absolutely thrilled that his team are winning and not playing at their best and I think um, Michael Beale may think he's saying well listen we're only one nothing down and again they haven't really played so both managers are expecting the performance levels to improve in the second half but Celtic are controlling this game they've got the one nothing advantage and the, the, the more the match goes with that scoreline they just have to take more and more risks yeah Dyson Maida with the only goal in that opening 45 minutes here at Ibrox the half time score is Rangers nil, Celtic 1 well, Hans Postacoglu uh, will be happy with some aspects of Celtic's first 45 minutes, unhappy with others, sloppy use of the ball at times. Uh, I think we'll find out the extent of what's been going on behind the scenes in the second half because the James Forrest experiment hasn't really worked for Celtic. Uh, you wonder if there might be a change in that regard. Uh, Matt O'Reilly not had his finest 45 minutes. You wonder, Aaron Moy second half but you know at least what it stands for Celtic now is if Celtic score a second goal the game and the league is over 
Yeah, but listen, I agree with you. I mean, it's been sloppy from both teams, but Celtic edge it, I think. They they look more comfortable in possession. They look, they're the one team that has looked to, to try and work openings rather than just throwing things into the box. I think Rangers' best hope is when it's came down the left-hand side and Barisic has been in a couple of decent crossing positions in a couple of set pieces. But I think Celtic have moved up reasonably well until certain stages Maeda certainly looks the danger man I would agree with you on the other side I don't think James Forrest has had his best 45 minutes Juranovic seems to be way off it and I wonder if it would even cross Postacoglu's mind to have a look at that 25 minutes that he played and thought maybe you weren't the right option when I've got Burnaby sitting there but look Postacoglu will be happy his team's won up but I think his standards are that high he would expect better in the second half in terms of possession. I think the Rangers camp's got to be disappointed, Gordon. It's a must-win game. They're at home. Um, the only way they've been a danger is by the slackness of Celtic. I think they need a bit more out of one or two players, especially their so-called big players. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't doesn't help when your captain makes such a bad mistake and gives that Celtic the opening goal. But I think Michael Beal may tweak one or two things. He'll be looking at his bench as well, thinking, right, OK, let's see if the team talk works at half time. But they need to be a bit more sharper on the front foot, getting decent balls in, especially in the wide areas. You know, Barisic has got a beautiful left foot. Tavernier's got quality in the right. They've got to give the front men something to go at. Uh, Jim Duffy, how are the Rangers fans taking this? Uh, I've a quick look at Twitter, which is not always the best barometer. It tells you they're not happy at all with what they're witnessing. Um, what's it like inside the stadium? Yeah, you can you hear the frustration when the passes go astray, or when there's back passes or square passes. But you know, I mean, listen, the, the, the goal. I, I know that you, the guys, obviously, from where we were, you know, as I mentioned, Tavernier could have definitely done a lot, lot better. But for me, Marellis, it's, it's a criminal pass. You know, you're playing a blind square pass against a team who are notoriously good at pressing and can sense it in the first five minutes of an old for a match. He must just take possession. That's my else's strength. Get his backside out of defenders, hold it up, play a nice simple pass and keep possession. But he tries something, uh, you know, uh, difficult and dangerous and we're punished for it. But from Rangers' point of view, yeah, I mean, there's too many players that they haven't been creative enough yeah, they've looked for Baricic and Tavernier, but Sakala, Ken, Morelis, uh, Tillman, been very ineffective. And although Celtic haven't been at their best, um, they've still looked relatively comfortable, other than, I've seen a couple of, a couple of set plays in that one um, you know, error. But that was an error from Celtic, that wasn't the that they just created themselves. So, yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd be surprised if, 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 if both managers um, you know, stay the way they are. Celtic might. Um, leave it a little bit but I, I, I would expect possibly um, Michael Beal to, to change personnel or shape because Celtic are getting out too easy for the back um, you know they're, they're not pressing for me they've got to press another 10-15 yards higher up the pitch and make Joe Hart hit it long to Kyogo but they're, they're not they're allowing that first pass and then getting out to Juranovic and out to Johnson and you, you, you say to yourself, like Gordon, Celtic are keeping their full backs in the traditional full back positions. And Rangers are kind of caught a little bit about how high to press. But for me, Rangers have to gamble, have to press 15 yards higher up the pitch. But I still think either personnel or shape has to change. What a big second 45 minutes coming up at Ibrox. Arguably a season defining 45 minutes. And it's coming next. Clyde One Super Scoreboard with Call Robert Accident Repair. Fault and non fault insurance specialist. Robert will even pay your excess. The games are over. The talking begins. 0141 951 1025. Clyde One Super Scoreboard's open line. Half time at Ibrooks, it's Rangers nil, Celtic 1 dies in Maida's early goal separates the sides as the half wears on. In any game, particularly this one Where the microscope is out We question what changes will be made at the break The Rangers need to do something to get them back into it The Celtic need to do something to press home uh, their advantage Are there any clues out there, Andrew McLean? Yeah, Jim and I have just been having a look out there at the moment All eight of Celtic substitutes came out right at the start of half-time It have been warming up since So I wouldn't expect them to make any changes It took around ten minutes or so for any Rangers substitutes to go out and warm up Most of them are out there but the ones that aren't out there at the moment, Ryan Jack and Kemar Roof, the rest of the players are out there warming up. So you wonder, Jim, whether there's potential for 
one or, or both of them to make an appearance in that second half early in the second half it would be interesting as well with Kmar Roof because the way that Michael Beale was talking about him in the build up to this game was as if he may be risked if Alfredo Morelos isn't ready for this game Antonio Cholak was deemed to be more fit than Kmar Roof yeah. but at the moment Antonio Cholak is out warming up with the rest of the players and there's still no Ryan Jack or Kmar Roof to be seen at the moment anyway yeah well if, as those, if those two players do come on then Kmar Roof could play off Morelos like a 10 and, and Tilbury could go to the right or Roof could maybe go right on to Juranovic uh, uh, because you know that, that might be the other, the other side of it uh, give some more goal threat there's no doubt about that um, and Tillman stays where he is and, and Ryan Jack would, you would imagine they would have to come on for Kamara but uh, yeah I mean listen those two, sub, uh, those two guys haven't come out and warmed up and it's almost the start of the second half Celtic as I said don't look as if going to make any changes but you know again uh, I think Rangers are the ones that have to do something that either has to change it tactically or personnel because they're the team behind they're the team chasing not just this game but you know the chance to stay in the t- any title race so uh, the teams are just coming out now so we'll find out in a minute or two yeah Celtic making their way out the tunnel first of all there won't be any changes for them but you can pretty much guarantee that around the 62nd minute mark is what Ange Postacoglu tends to do he goes out and he makes three changes a lot of the time they do have that quality on the bench as well the likes of Jota Leila Bada who's done very well in this fixture previously Aaron Moy who's in really good form Jogos Jakimakis as well and the Rangers team making their way out the tunnel at the moment and at present there doesn't look as if there's yeah. going to be any changes for Rangers at all and Malik Tillman the last of that starting 11 to make their way onto the pitch at the moment so Michael Beale hasn't made any changes in terms of personnel for this half but what does need to change on the pitch for Rangers Jim for them to get back into this game well they have to, they have to, they have to try to control the game a little bit more they have to be a bit more of a threat I mean, even when they have good balls in the box, as you know, the Marella there, kept that one shot uh, the, with the keeper saving that came from Marella. So maybe he kept those guys in and said, to them, listen, to the, to, to the guys going out the second half, look at 10 minutes to impress me. If not, these guys are going on. So maybe he's going to go on the good Michael Beale. But Rangers really have to try and press Celtic much higher up the pitch for me. If they are a bigger risk by, you know, getting yourself 15 yards further up the pitch because Celtic haven't been at the best in those situations. Celtic lead by a goal to nil. Matt O'Reilly gets us underway for the second half. Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Trade accounts available now. Call them today. Well, Hugh Keevans, if we said before the game a Celtic win ends the title race and a Rangers win means it's game on, this second 45 could hardly be bigger. Game defining, season defining. Uh, Rangers need two goals It's as simple as that um, We'll see what Celtic intend to do I think later in the match I'd, I'd still like to know The extent of the fitness Of those who are sitting on the bench For Celtic Because they're, they're, there's all sorts of strange things Going on today I mean James Forrest playing from the start Juranovic coming on And looking miles off it um, So it, it's finally poised Celtic have scored a terrific goal created for them by Rangers. Uh, if Celtic get a second goal, then the whole complexion of the day changes dramatically in their favour. I'll well, be interesting to see how Rangers approach us. Obviously, I was with the guys at the uh, Ibrox. I thought he'd have made the substitution. I'm looking at Kamara there, for instance. Good player, but not influenced the game. Tillman, not influenced the game. Kent's been floating in now to I think he needs a bit more. Now, you're talking about Roof, who's not played a lot of football. I'd be very surprised if you're looking for a goal. Cholak must be your man. He must be. He, he, he knows where the back end is. He, he, he thrives on balls coming in for the wide areas. He's played a lot more football time than than Roof. So it'll be interesting. Well, to see here goes Fashion does. Sakala. Josip Juranovic can't get near him. And here it is one on one. Ryan Kent at the back post. And it's a wonderful equaliser for Rangers. Goal flashes. With Clyde Built Home Improvements Stunning from Ryan Kent And what a start to the second half For Rangers It's Rangers 1, Celtic 1 Well that changes everything now uh, Celtic looking slack at the back And Kent's finish He did nothing in the first half uh, oh, Just yeah. uh, Maybe Maybe Fashion Sakala was offside But we'll need mm. to take another look Carry on as if he wasn't Well the, the finish is superb He had one chance in the first half And Joe Hart put the ball onto the post But that is unstoppable from Ryan Kent 
And now we await Perhaps The involvement of VAR it's, For the first it's just, time It's perfect Gordon In the set. That's what Rangers fans Want to see Ryan Kent do So much more often If you're on the left side You just open your body You curl it into that Far top corner That uh, game has restarted So the goal okay. stands Rangers 1 Celtic 1 Yeah where he kills All the defenders there Gordon Is he takes it so quickly you know, he just moves it with his right foot and bang, it's by Joe Hart before he can even say it. It's an absolute stunning goal. It's a response that obviously Michael Beale has been looking for. He's probably had a few harsh words in that dressing room and the Rangers players have responded. So, game on. Just it's a stunning finish, got to say. It's a stunning, stunning finish for Kent. You know, takes a great first touch, moves it inside and starts just outside that post. Joe Hart's got no chance. But in the build up to it, I've got to say, I, I said I wondered if Ange Postacoglu would think about changing Juranovic at half time. He does not look right, and just his part played in the goal. Yeah, miles off it again, wasn't he? Miles off it. He had an opportunity to put a tackle in twice. He didn't do it. Even McGregor coming over, I thought he could have got a foot in there, allowed the ball to go to Kent, and then it's too late. So. I'd, mm. What a start to the second half You know I was just going to say About the stats That popped up Just before the goal And sometimes stats Don't tell the full story Rangers Double the shots and goal From Celtic Double the touches In the opposition box From Celtic But Celtic still found Themselves in the lead And then Kent Goes and does that So Ibrox a different Sort of atmosphere now That's what Rangers had to do It had to be quick And it had to be Effective as Kent's goal was uh, If the game had gone on 15 minutes into the second half and Celtic still passing the ball about then you would have wondered about the outcome but I think the game is now completely back in the balance it has to be Gordon it changes mm. absolutely everything that any goal does obviously um, but if you're looking at the timing of it as well and here go Rangers again it's slashed over the bar uh, by Sakala um, Hugh said it's, it's a dream in, time to score yeah Hugh said it's in the balance I think it's just wavered towards Rangers slightly because of the quickness of the goal, Gordon. You're in that dressing room, you're a manager, Jim will tell you, Mark will tell you, you're looking for a response, you want it right away, you want to see something, and within minutes you're back into the most important game of the season so far. You've got to take confidence for that. Celtic just have to be careful here, because yeah. I actually think that's a decent chance for Sakala. I think he's he's a bit rash with his finish there. I think he could be more careful and get that in target and work Joe Hart because he had plenty of space again inside Juranovic easy pass no one within a few yards of him uh, there's time for this to change but did anyone have Fashion Sakala dominating Josip Juranovic on your bingo mm. card for today not really not really and I think we're all still in the sweep are we not I'm on 2-1 what are you on here 2-1 Celtic Mark 3-1 oh mm, uh, game yeah. on yeah, that's the, that's the big game that everyone's really interested yeah, in. Forget yeah, that league title, on. who cares? First year. Well, let's see who can get the first prediction up of the new year. John Lundstrom goes flying into one of those tackles that the home fans like. Yeah, you could just see the crowd there, loving every minute of it. And Bill wanting to make Ryan a Ryan Jack maybe. is going to come on. I always wonder about this whether that does my head if, someone's, if someone hasn't started the second half as Five fit, minutes? Uh, you know, whether they had the chance to shake off an off a knock and they haven't, because otherwise. Why Why do you make a change after five minutes? And I would be... But maybe the goal, to be fair, the game is different now. Yeah, I'd be very surprised if it's not Kamara. Um, I know that you could point fingers at one or two, but Sakala here is starting to grow in confidence. Ooh. That's a fair that's And a it's penalty. a penalty to Rangers. Carl Starfelt slides in on fashion. Sakala didn't look like something he had to do, Mark Wilson. Sakala goes down. John Beaton, to be fair, takes his time and then points to the spot. Well, you could see the slight tackle coming from a yeah. long way away and Starfelt, he almost wound up to tackle him. Juranovic doesn't cover himself in glory either. Sakala does well to cut back. Got to say it's a penalty kick. I don't know what Starfelt's thinking there because Sakala's going wide. He's got the touchline. Just slow down and let him go there. Carl Starfelt's had a very good game, Hugh. We praised it in the first half. That is crazy decision-making. But that's part of his game. Uh, he, he's what uh, fans refer to as a bomb scare. Uh, and he has gone in there in a fashion that he did not have to do and Tavernier has the penalty the whole afternoon in the space of six minutes has gone upside down I think I'd, I'd put my house on Tavernier to score and uh, Celtic will now have to think about rejecting this team because they, they've started the second half in a way that's going to take them nowhere Incredible moment this could be not only in this second half the game but maybe that title race as well James Tavernier against Joe Hart from the penalty spot to put Rangers in front Go 
Goal Flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. And that is a penalty from James Tavernier. Whips it right into the top corner. Joe Hart gambles and stays in the middle. Michael Beale trying not to show too much emotion. Hands in pockets. But this second half, this game, maybe even the title race. Has flipped on its head Rangers 2 Celtic 1 well, Incredible as, how foot Sorry yeah. you Incredible But going back to the penalty kick You could put two goalkeepers in there You ain't getting near that And and let's be fair to Tavernier He must be under immense pressure Because he knows he, He's the one that's coming in For a bit of criticism From the goal And he steps up there as a captain That is an absolute Brilliant penalty kick I always call this the game uh, That is a separate <laughs> life form And here we have In the space of six minutes uh, a game where Rangers were going nowhere for 45 minutes and now they're 2-1 up and Celtic are shell-shocked and Ange Postacoglu has a major decision to make on more than one front Do you think we're about to do the unthinkable? Well, probably not oh, Hold on, Celtic are in but it's cleared away um, Did I just see a penalty decision in an Old Firm game that the team that gave it away might actually not complain about? Yeah I mean, the, can the, have the, no the, complaints about it. Mm. I, I don't see that too often. I'm standing beside a former Celtic defender here who, as soon as it happened, <laughs> the nanosecond in which it took place, said penalty. Yeah, uh, so. you, you could just almost see it happening when Sakala goes into the box and you see the pace that Starfield's running at, and you think, well, one of two things is going to happen here. He's either going to time this to perfection, which is very difficult when the player's got his body between the defender and the ball. Or it's a penalty mm. kick And he catches Him sliding through Catches Sakala's back foot And wipes it away She's from him He's a forward player there Mark you're, you're praying he comes for that tackle You're really saying Come on yeah, that, You invite him in and, that, and, does, and, the, does the occasion do any of that? Because for me Who's never been in that pressure cooker mm. Surely sliding in the box Is the absolute last resort And he, as we said No need there whatsoever 100% no need um, but You need to see enough of the ball Gordon And you need to know the defender's body Or any party It's not going to mm. be between you and the ball but, And it was Yeah but even more than that Does it not also need to be The only way you can get the ball? No Staffel could have ran and, and stopped stood in front up. of Desperation again But again I think Juran I know I keep harping on about him But I think Juranovic The ball actually travels so far Before he actually makes any attempt to get there Now Sakala then Once he's past Juranovic He's in the box if, if he makes a tackle You know five yards before He gives Starfield a chance to get out And here comes Sakala again Juranovic is having a really tough afternoon Since he came on uh, Maeda clashes with Sakala um, But Tillman shows great feet um, he's just crowded out a bit in the box in the end uh, I think it's going to be a free mm. kick to Celtic Hugh, talk about goals putting a different spin on things Even mm. that aside, see if you now look We're 10 minutes into the second half Take the last, I don't know, 15 minutes of the first half It's actually been a while since Celtic threatened Yeah, This is yeah. now, this is now a, an objectively poor Celtic performance Given the players on the park right now uh, I'd fancy Rangers strongly to be the scorer of the next goal And not Celtic that's why I say Ange Postacoglu has a big decision or two to make here because it's slipping away now. It's starting to slip away. The second half has been a catalogue of errors and disaster for Celtic. And if you are Michael Beale, this is the dream scenario. You win this game and you make Celtic look uneasy. There's no doubt, Hugh, that Kent's goal has flipped his game yeah. right in his head. And, and, and that's what Beal would mm -hmm. have been looking for. Get out there, give the fans something, give yourselves something, get at Celtic, try and get this goal, and it's worked for them. I look at Celtic now, and the only good thing that they've got in their favour is, yes, we don't know how players are feeling, but they've got a quality bench that mm -hmm. Postacoglu can certainly go to. He'll have to go to it quickly, because it's slipping away. Yeah, they're a good bit out of this game, Mark, at the moment. Yeah, I would make the changes right away. I think Forrest has been poor this afternoon. O'Reilly's not been in. O'Reilly has been anonymous. And I also keep saying, I think Juranovic, you've got to think what you're getting out your left back. And if it's nothing and he's causing the issues going back the way, as well as in possession, why would you keep him on? So it's been a decision that mm -hmm. hasn't worked. So I would make the changes sooner rather than later if it was supposed to go. The, the dream scenario for Michael Beale because you were behind and now you're in front. And at the same time, you've made Celtic look poor. What does this say about, oh, hold on, because here comes Hitati, he's got away, and it's across, and it's oh, missed everyone my. again. Oh. It's the second time in the game Celtic have flashed one across that's managed to bypass everyone in the penalty box. I, I this one maybe takes a, a touch. Clipper. 
I think Maeda's got to be a l- oh, oh, some I, don't, lucky. I think, I think he's in there. Yeah, I think, I think it, McGregor. Took a, it took a touch because yeah. Celtic have the throw in on the far side. He does so well there to wriggle out of. You're a Rangers <laughs> minded person. You wonder, is it Tillman that's on the touchline? You wonder mm-hmm. why he's letting him in there. But another opportunity there just slips by for Celtic. And look, you can't pass up too many of the opportunities. Celtic haven't really created that many, but Maeda across the face in the first half, mm-hmm. Hatati there. Those are the ones you need something yeah. on the end. That slack from Rangers out for a throw in. What does this say about Rangers' character, Gordon? You are nine points behind. Mm. Everyone believes that, that Celtic will win the game, certainly externally. You're 1 0 down at the break. Fans are not happy with the performance. Then you go and start the second half like that. Yeah, they've been absolutely brilliant. They've been asked a question. The Rangers fans weren't happy with the performance, especially in a game with so, so much importance. They've responded to that. Now, the big question now is you're only an hour into the game do you stick or do mm-hmm. you twist that's where Michael Beale's got to realise we never did see that um, Ryan Jack change did we no not, not yet come. no just taking his jacket off for no good reason it's I'm, changed I'm, obviously now I'm sure Posta Coglu will not be having those options he'll be thinking right I need to get attacking players on this field and try and change this game but he's he's one of these managers that sometimes you're thinking right he's got to make three four changes a bad looks bad, yeah. to be heading back for instruction maybe even Aaron Moy uh, as well because Celtic Mark we always speak about in fact we did in the lineup to this game although F- Moy was in good form a lot of people predicted he would drop out because you, f- you fancied Ange Postacoglu to maybe go for his most dynamic midfield which he has but they could certainly be doing with keeping the ball an awful lot better yeah. Star- Starfield's gone yeah, yeah, and just once again there you know played into the midfield giving away yeah, it's not been it's not been great from the Celtic midfield and O'Reilly has been the poorest one from them I think Hitati's done fine McGregor usual kind of job but Moy was the one who you know the argument was about and I think you'll see a, a replacement here and I think so O'Reilly's the game's passed him by and Postacoglu has to get these players on quickly because if Rangers score a third goal before he gets them on he'd be as well telling mm-hmm. them to sit down again uh, corner to Rangers then They got their head on a few in that first half And in fact Morelos should have done better with at least one uh, As this one Lucky comes ball. all the way across mm, in the end ball again. Uh, Rangers felt that it either came off a Celtic Yeah I think they felt it came off a Celtic player But it's going to be a goal kick Yeah it's a good quality ball into front post Causes a bit of panic in the Celtic defence I think it's Ben Davis Just gets his head onto it uh, another warning for Celtic um, here's, a, here's the double change yeah. for Celtic It's Leah Labada and it's Aaron Moy Matt O'Reilly does indeed make weight As many people predicted Not a vintage afternoon for him So Aaron Moy replaces him Certainly on paper you're getting quality on the ball Mark Yeah <coughs> yeah. He's nice and assured on the ball I just wonder you know, how effective he is coming off the bench Compared to when mm-hmm. he starts yeah, yeah, very I've, true. I've never really been impressed with Moy When he's been introduced into these big games Always I think it takes him a wee bit of time to catch up and this one's frantic but look if he, if he gets a hold of the ball you'd have to bet on him being better than O'Reilly this afternoon because O'Reilly's so poor in possession poor going back as well not being his best afternoon uh, yeah so Leela Bada what can he do here's Dyson Maida who scored the goal that we thought was setting Celtic on their way to a win for a while but Rangers have come back strong and very strong they're in front and they look good for it that's good tracking though uh, from Rio Hatati, you just wonder what Jota's health is like, yeah. Hugh Evans. That, that's why I said earlier on. Uh, you you'll know the extent of the illness problems at Celtic by who comes off the bench and who stays on the bench. Rangers are visibly rejuvenated. They are enjoying themselves now. They feel there's a third goal in it for them. Celtic are subdued. The changes have been made. And they are hoping that they bear fruit. But at the moment, it is the dream scenario for Michael Beale. Ahead of Celtic and making Celtic look ordinary. Brilliant from Aaron Moy, though. First time we've seen him and Leila Bada can't get the better of Ben Davies. Throw in. If I, if I was Michael Beale, I'd be looking at probably Kamara. Bringing on the experience of Ryan Jack in the middle of the part. Just to shore things up a little bit. I don't think Kamara's had his best game. Um, but it'll be interesting to see Celtic try and put a ball into the box here Yeah, Goldson does well actually um, Didn't look like he was getting a lot And Rangers, man of the match so far, you have to say oh, Has been fashion Sakala mm, he, He's gave uh, Juranovic a, a tough afternoon I don't think Juranovic is helping himself Again there, goes into the tackle And 
you know, probably not as full blooded as you'd expect, and Sakala just wriggles away from him and he's away. It does leave you open to accusations here. Look, he's been ill. Ange Postacoglu yeah. said Juranovic has been ill, so yeah. let's not be too harsh on him. And also, he left Bellamy um, on, or, the, on the bench, you know, so, you know. Th- but I was just going to say, the accusations that he's maybe checked out ahead of a move. Uh, possibly all of that will come into play. Um, oh, oh, Abada flashes one I think it was a shot that he actually got wrong And uh, Tavernier's headed it away for a corner There are times when Ange Postacoglu will get it wrong The James Forrest decision mm-hmm. was wrong He's off the mm-hmm. part now uh, but Again, that maybe depends how ill the other two are You know, was the yeah, hand forced But um, it didn't work Whichever way you looked at it, it yeah. did not work Corner Celtic, it's headed up in the air I think it's going to be another corner mm. Connor Goldson did well to get in the end of it Well Celtic uh, showing a bit of fight now they, they were in the first 15 minutes of the second half They were getting wiped out uh, And uh, now they're back in with fight uh, Another dangerous ball, ball Aaron Moy bouncing around oh. everywhere Can't even see who's favourite to get it uh, And in the end <laughs> What a scramble that is Rangers get it clear Oh, I was, uh, you know, it was hard to understand what was going on there. There were so many bodies in the way. A good ball from Moy, you've got to say, and that just incites a bit of panic in the Rangers box. Celtic have to do a lot more of that because they're not putting the back line under any sort of pressure at the minute. The referee's given something here. Is that a. What's he given? Uh, maybe when that ball came in, what are they looking at? They're looking at a handball, I think, on oh, Ben Davies. Handball. His hand was by. It hits his hand, I think. Is it but... Golton? Are they looking at Golton's handball for um... Starfield's volley? Okay. Oh yeah, I think they are actually. Oh, Goldson's hand up. is in front of his face. Yeah, mm, his hands are up. Not had any drama yet. Sixty-five minutes in, and he's actually stopped the game. Hold the front pages. To, to look at this. <laughs> and the back, and the middle, and the. I wonder if this is given. If that would be harsh. Goldson's hands yet yeah, are in front of his face. Are they outstretched? Are they further from they're, his they're, body? They're up. They're they're on their way up. Well, we know what the hand bottle. Oh, oh no, play, play on. on. Play on, nothing doing there So we might hear a few thoughts on that one after the we, game Hugh. We surely will What was your thoughts on that? Uh, I think it's a penalty Mark? I thought that would have been harsh, if I'm honest Yeah, harsh, I'm going down the harsh okay. But I could understand why it was given Let me let me ask you, just so that we're clear Harsh in your personal opinion Or harsh compared to what we've seen given for handball yeah, well, in, At the I'm, World Cup and in the Premiership and in Europe this season If I'm Celtic, I'm very disappointed in not getting that because we did say that his hands are up um, So I think the, that he's got The reason up. I thought it was harsh is I don't think his hands were outstretched they were still I in thought front they were of his still face. in front of his body mm, okay. but when, narrow. You can, when you consider the, uh, the one given against Burnaby uh, Who had his hand behind his head And had no idea whatsoever That the ball was going to strike him Or the other ones that are taking place It's a uh, Harsh not to award it In my estimation Given what has been given before I can mean on one hand Pardon the pun You have to take them all In their individual merits But um, Uh, uh, When you see it back uh, It it, it can can eclipse his hand On the way up If you like The more I'm seeing it The more I'm thinking And get away with one Okay you're now changing Your opinion Right Yeah (laughs) I'm going down there I think he's got away with one there Mm. And Costa Goglu's fear was that the VAR might cost one of the teams today And he expressed those fears prior to kick-off mm-hmm. I think it is harsh not to award Celtic a penalty there Well, I think everyone knows the handball rule is an absolute binfire at times <laughs> Mark Wilson, whether that's in our Premiership or the World Cup you can, you can forget trying to predict them You can compare and contrast all you like and say they got this and we didn't get that Um but it's almost at the stage where you're kind of giving up trying to predict. Yeah, that, like you can only give your opinion. My opinion, I don't <laughs> think that's a penalty. If it was in the Celtic box, I'd be saying exactly the same. I, I'd be saying uh, it's not a penalty. So, yes, did it hit his hand? Yes, but look, we've argued over many have been given, and I've, I've stood here and says that's never a penalty. So I'm, I'm not just going to mm-hmm. change my mind because it's here at Ibrox and Celtic are up against it. Very magnanimous of you, Rangers mm-hmm. 2, Celtic 1, 67 gone. We've seen a bit of a response from Celtic, nothing major, but a bit better, Gordon. Yeah, um, a little bit more urgency, but the fact is they've still to test Alan McGregor in the, um, the Rangers' goal. The, um, you know, they'll be desperate to get back into this game because obviously 
the substitutions were bad again down this right hand side Sean so Lundstrom does really yeah. really well Mark tactically is that exactly what you're looking for if you know Barisic is high and there's a ball aimed at Leela Bada yeah. you're, you're wanting Lundstrom to cut it out well I said in the first half that Tavernier could do with some of that a bit of cover and Lundstrom does exactly what you'd want there if your full back's up in the pitch he has to sense the danger and he does that I don't think it was a bad ball from Oi right idea Setting a bad off, but we also has to get Lundstrom. it right. If he misses it, you're in deep trouble. Oh, yeah, 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 without a doubt. But I think Moyes looked quite good since he's come on. You know, a few early touches, try to open up the play, nice and composed. And this is a critical time in the game. If Celtic can, you know, just get in top again and force Rangers back, then you know Rangers will find it difficult to contain them. But they've not done it enough. Fair play to Maeda. He keeps in a wayward um, Carl Starfelt pass. There is someone down. In the Rangers team as well I think it was it Morelos I think he's back up He's fine On we go I wonder If Kyogo might come off He's, yeah. he's offered nothing But no, uh, nothing. I'm looking at Maeda as well Q. See the first half Tavernier I think's played him well Second half He's yeah. not given him the space They've obviously worked on Cutting off the supply to him Because he was one and one Against Tavernier Down that That flank And causing all sorts of problems I don't think he's had One run at him in the second half so far I'd agree with that I think Rangers press has been much better even when Joe Hart's got the ball oh here's a chance for Celtic Celtic claiming another handball I don't think there was much in that then it's blocked again by Conor mm -hmm. Goldson I'm going to make Get a compilation a of these by the end of the by the way no idea if that hit his hand at all but you know that's the way these things will end up being viewed um, John is Beaton he, yeah he is that. checking again Oh, oh, just, oh, they, they have to do this, yeah, you know. Yeah. If there's any any hint of it, that's fine. They, they do that. That's not a great angle, that one. So let's see. Hand definitely by his side in the first one. Would you agree? Hundred uh, percent. And if I'm that's the only one, nothing's going to be done here. Oh, again, I can't really see the second one, can we? It's moved that no, quickly. No, the first one never, never in a million years. Mm. His, his hand's right by his side. So if, if that's the one they're checking, and nothing's happening here. Um, they will be taking their time because they might need to look at both those incidents. I know people um, do complain about the length of time, but ultimately, yeah. and they are oh, on we go, on. play on. Uh, Aaron Moy swings one into the box. Rangers have defended their box well in the second half. Josip Biranovic can't get there, and now Rangers are on the break. This could be a big moment for Rangers to try and kill this off. Alistair Johnson <laughs> shows guns. Oh, like Kala, as good as he's been. Uh, sometimes those are the moments that, that kind of let him down Gordon just a bit of quality a bit of composure yeah and uh, there's certainly a bit of support there as well you know he's got to get his head up he's got to try and play that because Rangers had a great opportunity to break on Celtic if Rangers had to get the next goal here then I'm with you there's, I don't think there's any way back for Celtic as much as we know how good they've been in the past but Rangers have just grew in confidence in the second half they're defending well um, you know they've got two terrific goals in the sense that Tavernier I think for the pressure that he was under for a penalty kick was an absolute brilliant if finish Ryan Jack's going to come on for Rangers are they looking to shore it up or are they going to try uh, and press on and get that third which certainly would end it John Lundstrom has taken a whack I think in the, the ribs um, if you're a lip reader you'll be able to tell he's not happy <laughs> about it um, I think we'll just see it again I think it was just when he um, he tried to, in fact, not even really, didn't, it seemed quite an innocuous contact, actually. Um, but he does seem to have hurt his ribs off. He goes, John Lundstrom off and Ryan Jack on. If you examined the one defeat in 51 that Celtic have had, it came on a day in Paisley when they just didn't play well. And today, with a goal of a start, they look uncharacteristically mm -hmm. shaky. Is this where the... Oh, oh, Sakala's in again yeah. Juranovic has got the wrong side This could be it Rangers well blocked Really well blocked Carter Vickers um, But here comes Tillman And he's showing tidy footwork um, Until Maeda pinches it And that's very nice By Aaron Moy It has to be said um, Is this where home advantage Can play a part Mark? Rangers can spend The 45 minutes Not being at their best You get a big moment right And all of a sudden it's the Celtic players that will feel the heat of that atmosphere. Well, I, I think they, they're certainly shown that, but I'm surprised, Gordon, because we saw the Celtic team thrust into, you know, atmospheres that are could maybe match us uh, and players that are, are great on this Ranger side and they still control and pass the ball well. But this afternoon, they are struggling in possession. I've, I've very rarely seen a Celtic performance under Ange Postecoglou. Mm -hmm. 
that the players give the ball away so much so and, it, and it looks easy passes as well but Malik Nothing Tillman hard. slides in on Hatati. it is a foul I'm just thinking 72 minutes no bookings mm. yet no. it's actually been Sorry. quite tame hasn't it Yeah. yeah unless think, I've I, missed a booking I think I, the difference uh, Rangers have tweaked it in the second half they're getting nearer they're, getting, they're closing Celtic down they're working better as a unit they've not allowed Maeda to get on the ball and take on Tavernier 1v1s uh, but they have to be careful as a free kick comes on here. Yeah, Aaron Moy's free kick, but it's just too high for Cameron Carter Vickers at the back post. Just it? too flat, just driven in. You know, you really want a bit of whip into that. So if anything, it's taking it in towards McGregor and you're giving your your attackers a good run at it. You would think that Ange Postacoglu would have other subs in mind now because he's got 18 regulation minutes left plus whatever's added on. Kyogo, by his very, very high standards, has been... Totally anonymous. Perhaps Giacomacus, although we've remarked upon his body language and he looks as if he's had his day at Celtic, but there's a game to be salvaged here. Not to be won, simply to be salvaged in the form of an equalising goal. And at the moment, Celtic don't look as if they have an equalising goal. In yeah, I mean, we said before the game, a draw suits Celtic, absolutely yeah. suits Celtic more than it does Rangers. Um, I think the Celtic fans have got higher standards I'm not sure they'd be happy with a draw Because of the way they've started the season um, But if they can try and nick that mark The problem would be they don't they don't look that likely No, they take a draw now I, I think just whether we, this game's panned out Now the first half, they started well But if you assess that first half They quickly fell out of it And in the second half they've just not turned up You're right, they, it's not as if they're battering down the door here And, and putting Rangers under all sorts of pressure it's pretty, uh, you know, insipid performance from Celtic in terms of what they're offering going forward. Uh, even runners in behind Kyogo, you know, checking and getting in behind Goldson. Not seen any of it this afternoon. Yeah. And it set, you knew early in the first half, Gordon, it would be this kind of game. Celtic weren't brilliant in the first half when they mm -hmm. were leading. And now that Rangers are in front, they're not performing brilliantly in, in the traditional sense either. They're doing their jobs right. They're doing them better than Celtic. Kind of what Celtic did in the first half. It's been it's been a bit fraught, hasn't it? It's been a nervous game for both uh, parties. I've got to say, you know, the quality that we were looking for hasn't really been there. But that's what you get in this game. Sometimes it's just a bit frantic, and you get lost up in the quality with it. As Celtic try and put a good ball in the back post, that's great defending. defending. Well headed away by James Tavernier, who took a knock from Dyson Maeda. Alan McGregor leading the protests. I don't think there's it. it. I it think, I think my head has got every right to go and put his head on that. It's just he's, a clash of heads, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, he's firmly got his eyes on the ball, and Tavernier got to say it's a sore defend. one. Oh, yeah, Tavernier's you know nose is his nose. bleeding, so he'll need to go off and get some sort of treatment anyway. I, I would imagine. Got to say, good defending that. He knows my head is coming in at the back post. He knows he has to put his. His body on the line there And he gets the final touch But takes a sore one Scott Wright Is going to come on for Rangers Tell we'll me Find maybe. out who that's in, in place of Tavernier has taken a whack to the nose The man who scored the penalty uh, That puts Rangers in front here In what could be a Massive Massive day In this title race Which might be back on Some people said we didn't have one Before yeah. today Hugh If the gap is reduced to six points And there are still another two of these Derby matches to be negotiated uh, Along with uh, another 16 league matches as well uh, Then of course it's back on Six points means it's arithmetically back on And all the more pleasing for Michael Beale Because he's a goal behind And then he's 2-1 in front And he's made Celtic look poor And this is the last throw of the dice From Ange Postacoglu Jota and Giacomacus This is the, the mark of a man who knows that A draw would be a psychological blow to Rangers at this particular stage and this is it this is the the final throw of the dice Jota Giacomacus is it as simple as Maeda and Kyogo Hugh, for I think you? so I think so yeah straight swaps Maeda, Maeda's dropped out a bit yep. after yep. a very yeah. fine Maeda start. off scored the opener for Celtic good first half you'd have to say but then faded you know what I feel for him because I don't think he got the service yeah. in the second half I think Rangers have pressed Celtic that well oh. I, I thought he'd go with two I really thought Do you know something I can totally understand All the arguments about Kyogo's not being But you need a goal Yeah Rio right? has, For, you for anyone who's wondering scorer. What the noise effects are for Rio Hatati has gone off For Georgius Giacomacus So Celtic are going for this They've sacrificed a midfielder To bring on Giacomacus And keep Kyogo on there as well Scott Wright still waiting To come on for Rangers 
In the mm. business of bragging rights If Celtic snatch a draw Then they leave Their 708 supporters leave Ibrox And it's still 9 points And therefore They're extremely happy mm-hmm. If Rangers win the game Then everyone looks at Celtic's performance Looks at the decision to start with James Forrest Etc, etc Leaving Aaron Moy out for a Matt O'Reilly who hasn't scored a goal this season And was offering very, very little today So now we've got 13 regulation minutes Plus who knows how many minutes added on uh, James Tavernier's nose is taking mm. some tre- oh, So that was a free kick to Rangers And then it wasn't Obviously wasn't it was, a yeah. Yep um, I mean, I know, I know how he feels about the noses. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just glad that I'm not playing. Or the skull, if it'd been the other way around. No, the game would have been called off. Um, but Rangers will be happy. Did um, right come on? Yeah, I don't think. Well, who is he coming on for? Uh, you know, you would if it was Sakala, you would think that that would be a surprise, wouldn't you? Um, Kent, would you take Kent off? He's he's not been in it a bunch apart from his goal. No. I'm looking. If it is a draw, Hugh, the spinning that will be done will be great, as you say, because Celtic oh, yeah. fans would be entitled to say, "Well, we were not at our best. We went to Ibrox, yeah, and we still haven't lost, and we're still nine points clear." The Rangers fans would say, mm, "Tough one," but. You know what we've shown We're not that far away From them under Michael Beale You know we just need A little tweak here or there And, and we'll be back And if it stays 2-1 for Rangers The Celtic fans will say Well we left Ibrox Six points clear And if someone had offered us A six point lead At the start of the season On January mm. 2 We'd have taken it but, ah, but the Rangers fans Will counter that argument By saying You're supposed to be From a different planet <laughs> You're supposed to be So superior mm. to everything In Scotland That all resistance Is useless and Rangers have beaten mm, you. Sakala through the middle. It's Alfredo Morelos who's gone off for Scott Wright. And Mark, it's sort of thing I've learned doing this job when you're just watching the game from this perspective is you can actually, when it gets frantic, you can afford your good players or your match winners to actually not have a good game. Morelos missed a couple of chances. He gave Celtic their goal, but he might be a part of this Rangers team that goes on to, yeah. to score what would be a famous victory. He looks disappointed coming off. Um, it's just not been that type of game You've not needed loads of match winners Ryan Kent has stepped up magnificently uh, So has James Tavernier And that's, yeah, that's not, all that matters Not been a moment. great performance from Morelos You know, he gives the ball away for the first goal uh, You know, he has a couple of chances in the, the first half And then after that He's never really contributed But you're right, Gordon Sometimes the game just pans out that way That your front man You look at the opposite side Kyogo mm-hmm. Hardly involved Either of them To get a touch of the ball Rangers are league, affected Rangers him. are league lead, uh, Celtic sorry Are league leading In the last 15 minutes Of games this season They've scored 16 times yeah. Rangers are second To be fair They've they've scored 12 uh, So they can do it To a point But it's something Celtic have Almost become Famous for Well you, The man who Chased that ball there Giacomacus uh, The famous time At Perth When St Johnson equalised very very late in the game and uh, you thought that there was going to be a draw and then the up he popped with a goal I'm just not sure uh, just looking at it I, I'd still believe that Rangers look more energised galvanised and if I had to put money on it I'd say they were likely to score a third goal before Celtic get an equaliser In truth I'm not even disagreeing with the notion as such we've not had any goal scoring um Goal mouth action from either side really have we Not for, really. for quite a while now and I believe that's down to the fact that neither team has been able to really string five six passes together to build any sort of attack you know either two and three passes then give it away and invite the other team on Starfelt does extremely well there by the way because Tillman's pressing him and he does a Cruyff turn in his own box you know he always gives Opposition I'd, defenders a wee chance. I'd, I'd, need to see it, I'd need to see it back. I think you're getting a yellow for incorrect use of Cruyff turn. Yeah, That's, maybe not Cruyff. Cruyff. Maybe I don't maybe know, a roll of the studs over the ball. I don't think Aye. it was official. It's a defenders Cruyff. That's what we'll call that. The one thing I've always said about Celtic manager when he makes changes, they make an impact. So far, oh, as Jota's mm, come down this left hand well. side, um, you know, a bad is not really get into it. Jack and Mac is here making a good run. Moy looks all okay, uh, but. My worry for Celtic right now is Where is the goal going to come yeah. from? Yeah, James Sands is going to come on as well There was a bit of action with Kamal Roof's jacket But I think he's putting it back on um, So James Sands again If we're talking about shoring things up Is that Sands on for Tillman? Is that what you do there if you're if you're a Michael Beale? 
I think so I think at this stage of the game if you're Beal you would take it you know Celtic have made a couple of positive substitutions in Jota and Yakimakis and you just wonder if he requires an extra body in there you know he doesn't have to go chasing things Carter Vickers gives it away um, they managed to slow down Scott Wright initially I wonder if that will get pulled back for the initial infringement no says John Beaton and on we go well on we go where for Celtic yeah. you know uh, that as I say, on the day when they lost at Paisley, they just didn't play well. And in the second half, they have not played well at all. And they have been taken aback mm. by the consequences. I, th- I think you've got to give a bit of credit to Rangers here. Sure, yeah, I, yeah. I think they've really, really sorted themselves out at half time, made it harder for Celtic to play. Um, you know, being a threat. And obviously, obviously, Kent's goal right after half time makes such a difference this can't be acceptable for Ange Postacoglu you, know, you just can't do this but did that Joe Hart error set, error set the tone for this entire game now that I think about it I was going one way I was one direction um, a until that here. there's yeah. a three on two in Rangers favour Celtic getting numbers back now but here comes Malik Tillman what oh, a block what a that tackle. is from Cameron Carter Vickers it could have been the game oh. uh, wrapped up. Yes, did the Joe Hart error set the tone well, for this afternoon? The game was going firmly one way. Rangers fans were frustrated with the way their team were performing. Celtic were probably manage a game with ease, and all of a sudden you invite Morelos on and Kent hits the post. And at that point, yeah, it was a turning point. You know, Celtic seemed a wee bit rattled. You mentioned it at that time, and it just took a different turn to the game. But there, there you go. I mean, Celtic pushing bodies forward. Almost get done on the counter attack. It's a wonderful tackle from Carter Vickers, but Tillman, if you're being harsh, probably should have taken that a wee bit quicker. Once he was set, taking it quicker and put the game to bed. I, I think that because Celtic got to half time a goal in front, the Joe Hart mistake was in the past. It's the way Celtic started the second half and the way Rangers started it, and with the goal from Kent being so dramatically good, it took Celtic apart really and they have never looked the same they've conceded a needless penalty Starfelt if anything has caused Celtic uh, to be concerned about themselves it was an utterly needless challenge concedes the penalty Tavernier scores and Celtic have never looked remotely like scoring an equaliser and the day is building up to be a Huge one for Michael Beale Absolutely And it's nearly over Five minutes of the 90 left There was a, a lengthy delay For the James Tavernier Bloody nose There was a VAR Two, two VAR checks um, In the second half So there will be a bit of mileage left yet And it is Sands for Tillman Gordon Yeah Not surprised I think Tillman's grown into the game Second half He had a good opportunity there But great defending From Carter Vickers um, you know, it just gives them that extra defensive-minded player on there. Rangers would be over the moon with this. They'll be t- counting down the clock. Look, they don't need to go and chase the game now. It's up to Celtic to get back into it. Uh, but they've got to concentrate because you know that just one glimmer of a chance, Celtic can put the ball in the back of net. And this is where Rangers probably deserve credit, Mark, because we said that at the start, you need to try and do your thing fine, but you need to make sure the game doesn't go into the ha- the hands of your opponent this game has played out not in the way Celtic would have it is so scrappy it yeah. is so so scrappy three points to some people are all that matters but if you can turn it into the type of game that your your um, opponents dislike because Rangers have been bang at it in terms of getting closer Celtic have been slack and it, that's why we're seeing Rangers winning it yeah, particularly in the second half as soon as the, the game kicked off you could see a difference in I think you've got to give credit to Rangers in the way that they've pressed Celtic from the back. You know, they've got it right. They they haven't gave up space in midfield or the wide areas. They haven't allowed their full backs to come inside and, and overload that midfield. And Celtic have found that difficult to break through. And this could be, again, another chance for Rangers to kill it off. Kamara got himself in good space. Kent finds him again. But Kamara just has to end up sacrificing, giving away a throw in. Well, there you go, at least Carter Vickers learns a lesson from Starfield the other side because it's pretty similar. You know, Kamara going away from goal, he just stands up and look what Kamara does. Puts the ball out of play. Other side, Starfield dives in, gives away the penalty that will cost Celtic if they don't get anything in these closing minutes. You don't get the impression, you know, for the, the most part, 99 times out of 100, you look at Celtic and think, it's coming, it's coming. But you don't get the impression looking at them 
this afternoon that, that, that there's anything imminent here. They just look to be struggling. The, they're lacking a bit of sharpness for me. Yeah. You know, I'm used to watching Celtic. Everybody compliments them. They're entertaining football. As Jota here's trying to make something work. We are in Moyes in the box, but there's so many Rangers bodies back and Ryan Jack what does chance. great. It's bobbling around Must everywhere be. and there's an equaliser for Celtic. Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. And it's Kyogo who has his left hand in the air Salutes from the Celtic fans 87 and a half gone It's Rangers 2, Celtic 2 in the modern era You know you have to hold your horses a bit To see if there's any mm. uh, infringement in the lead up uh, But Aaron Moyes no. well on side there I think Borna Barisic is no. much deeper at the back post Jota flicks it in Jackie Mack is blocked off Scott Wright And fired into the roof of the net by Kyogo and we've got a serious game on our hands, Hugh Keevers. Well, how much time is going to be added on by John Beaton? Because It'll have to be a lot. Yeah, this is the psychological kick in the teeth that Rangers dreaded. But, funnily enough, it was the Celtic players who ran to retrieve the mm-hmm. ball to get the game restarted. That's the mantra, they say, isn't it? Yeah, we never stop. So, clearly they believe there's a, a major shock and now what do Rangers do, Gordon mm, Deal? That, that, that's the pro- For me, I think they've still got to go and try and get three points. I, I draw is no good to them here. I said earlier when the substitutions were, when you're looking for a goal, as much as Kyogo has not influenced yep, this you game, it. keep your strikers on the pitch at know where the back end is, and it's paid off brilliantly but for them. But here so comes far. Ryan Kent. Maybe Rangers do fancy <coughs> this. Maybe they're going to be the ones that come back and land that final blow. Um, Mark Wilson Kyogo's fifth goal in four games he's in red hot goal scoring form on a day where he's been very very quiet well just goes to show you what an important player he is for Celtic does is spot on you know when you need a goal keep your top goal scorer on and he's there the right place at the right time composed finish you know because he's got bodies flying in in front of him he just sides oh it's terrible dilly dallying is it James Sands and luckily for him I think the pass was poor uh, from Celtic Celtic really should have been through on goal that was very very slack oh, Rangers from got James away with one there yeah. yeah and you've got to say the manager Celtic made positive substitutions you put enough bodies in the box to incite a bit of panic and that's exactly what happened there Moy does brilliantly Jota does great to keep it alive Jack and Marcus plays his part and Kyogo finishes it and well, what an end to this game this would concern Celtic greatly going forward Cameron Carter Vickers is down he's Probably going to shake it off and mm. finish the game, but if there is anything doing there, he's been a massive part of Celtic's recent success. Kobe Yashi's on the bench today. I yeah. didn't notice you. Um, you, know, you think back to that amazing block from Cameron Carter Vickers earlier on mm, yeah. in the second half. He's had a good afternoon, and it's seven, seven minutes. Seven added on, which everyone always gets all worked up about. But James Tavernier was down for ages. We had VAR checks over about eight, we up to eight subs, something along those lines. So. Um, in the modern era, Gordon, that's not a surprising number. No, no, we've got seven minutes. Can someone find a winner from somewhere? Um, you wouldn't put it by them. Rangers, desperate, as I say. If I was Michael Beale and I, I tend to maybe just go for it because. Well, if we've seen before the game, apparently a draw doesn't suit Rangers, then you have to, do you not? Yeah, and obviously the goal difference as well is another point, Gordon. So you're looking basically 10 points. Um, you ain't going to claw that back Absolutely not This is a perfect opportunity today Celtic haven't been the best I thought Rangers second half Were a lot lot better Causing problems um, But if Celtic out of here With a point They'd be delighted Absolutely delighted with it There's still a chance In this For either side Another six minutes to go mm. This is getting into the Celtic box From Tavernier Round about the halfway line It's a high line from Celtic Yeah and I'll tell you what It's going to be won initially by Celtic there's so many bodies in there and Fashion Sakala who's been brilliant for, for Rangers at times in this second half and he's back into the box again but Whoa. oh there he is. Y- you see the two sides of Fashion Sakala quite often takes on a crazy shot very rash slices it high into the, the stand he's him in a, a nutshell unfortunately for Rangers fans because he's so quick and he's been very very good this afternoon but that's the second time he's been in a similar position and he just slashes at things and he gets it all wrong again. And what he's allowed now is Celtic to regain possession and come up the other end. I think a, a, a seven-minute carrot has been dangled in front of two teams here because there's now every scope for a 3-2 win either way. 
Absolutely A, a rare A poor pass you'd have to say From Callum McGregor Celtic Over tried to come forward uh, Not as measured as he wanted You know what Running in behind is not Aaron Moy's strength But it still should have been uh, yeah, A bit better for, Yeah I'd, I'd think it just sums the, the game up Gordon I think yeah Guys like Cal McGregor Who is full Fair of quality is, you know what, let's See before anyone wants to take bragging rights Can we all just agree that overall For us sort of in the yeah. middle uh, The possession's been given away by yeah. both teams a 100%, lot 100% But it's still the usual game It's got talking points It's big points uh, We'll discuss it all the way through to the open line But you're right I think with the quality and the ability on the pitch Some of it's been real poor and That's a good uh, run from Aaron Moy he just comes from behind uh, Ryan Jack it Allows Celtic to keep possession near the the edge of the box there'll be some Jota footwork attempted I'm sure it comes to Callum McGregor just quite patient but he doesn't see Sakala um, and I think that will be a free kick our first booking is it 93 minutes gone unless I missed one earlier on um, well, Callum McGregor's looking around for someone to blame but the only one to blame is the captain that was a worthy booking from Starfield by the way because when he gets robbed there mm. and if Starfield doesn't take down Sands things open up Cal McGregor I like him yeah. Very very easy for me to say I acknowledge that But what has surprised Me a bit Gordon If we're talking about How frantic it is One booking the, the, No the, the players almost well, what act, that is. act surprised That people are coming From their blind side So many people are doing it You know Dilly dallying on the ball this game's played at 100 miles an hour. Can you just start off by assuming that someone's going to yeah. come and try to pick it yeah, off? Yeah, and, and especially in such an important part of the game. When you look at the clock, you know seven minutes here could define your season. Of course it could. If Celtic walk out, I'm sure everybody would say that they're going to go and win the league. With here come Rangers, though. But oh, how bad is that? It's wow. from James Tavernier. The pass is behind Ryan Jack. He takes a nibble at Jota. That might be pulled back if Celtic give it away, and it is. And Jack will go in the book. That's a classic example of trying to take one for the team. I wonder what Tavernier's thinking there because he's got Juranovic exactly where he wants him, backing up into his own box and he just carelessly plays it backwards and the momentum goes to Celtic now. So that was an opportunity for Rangers just to get at that Celtic back line again. It's been a fascinating end to the game. I think the last 10 minutes when Celtic made the substitutions, they have been slightly better. They started trying to turn Rangers and McGregor played a couple of balls into Moy who made those runs he's made a difference Moy when he came on as the ball goes up to Abada he's been very quiet though since he came on hasn't he hardly touched yeah. it you see two sides of Starfield to, for me today I thought first half his positional play heading defending good on the ball as well very very half. good second half my he's just completely changed we're coming out the, well, the changing rooms there were two sides of him in the second half as well bad and worse <laughs> You've got to say this is a big plus for Celtic Going out to Ibrox With a point After the way the second half's panned out Because they've not been good at all But they've not lost the game I cannot unless, believe unless. How both of these sides are giving the ball away Giacomakis does brilliantly in the corner Battles, turns And the pass inside <laughs> Just so slack uh, As Carter Vickers wrestles there And that's very scrappy and it's oh, a free done. kick to Celtic Which the Rangers players are surprised about He's done well, well there yeah. I'm not too sure it was a free kick It could have went either way there But he just showed his strength there oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, the referee's got that he's right he's, he's, yeah. Jersey, yeah. Uh, But look at, look at, Car look at yeah, Carter Vickers as just, well just It could have went that. either way yeah. They're both pulling the jerseys And that's why Mark called it Yeah, I think he's been I think he's been yeah. his usual self today You know Calm, composed <laughs> He's been there when he needed it. Hugh rightly said that Bock Tillman could have made it 3 1, but Carter Vickers was there. We're nearly done. We've got one minute of the seven added. It is a minimum of seven minutes. We always say that. Just worth bearing in mind before anyone gets upset if something happens 10 seconds beyond <laughs> uh, that seven minutes. Um, but we are nearly there. It's Rangers 2, Celtic 2. A point that in league table terms would suit Celtic more, you have to say. Um, but maybe Rangers Michael Beale would take some heart from this a game that they uh, certainly haven't been second best well you think back to Pataudry seven minutes added on and Rangers got the game at the death we've got half a minute now uh, but surely Celtic would not be so lacking in concentration that they would concede you never know stranger things have happened but Ryan Jack clears up Situation there as Rangers go back the way, and maybe the last attack will belong 
To the home side Tavernier the captain The one that scored the second He's trying to bring Scott right in He gives it away uh, We should know We should we should know by now After 97 minutes That nothing has is sustained In this game No attacks have been sustained And that is that Let's go to Ibrox Rangers 2 Celtic 2 The full time score At Ibrox The celebrations Much bigger In the away end Than the home end Because Michael Beale Came within a few minutes Of winning his first Old Firm match in charge But a late Kyogo goal Means the points Are shared Celtic took the lead Early on And they had a big Helping hand from Rangers Alfredo Morelos Played a risky Blind pass Across his own half James Tavernier Got to it But then he played A soft pass Back the way There was Dyson Mada He pounced He picked up the ball He got past Connor Goldson And calmly finished past Alan McGregor for the opener it had been all Celtic in the opening stages they looked comfortable up until the 28th minute where they really put themselves in trouble Alfredo Morelos closing down Joe Hart who cleared the ball, it hit Alfredo Morelos, he kept it in at the byline he cut it back to Glenn Kamara, it was then on to Ryan Kent, his strike with the right foot was good it was going towards the bottom corner Joe Hart made amends by tipping that one onto the post, there was no real huge chances before half time, a couple of Alfredo Morelos headers from corners but Celtic had been the better team and were deservedly in front but after the break Rangers turned the game on its head in a matter of eight minutes Fashion Sakala key in both their goals as well the first he made a driving run towards the Celtic box he found Ryan Kent he cut in on his right before producing a wonderful curling strike to equalise Sakala then causing problems again a few minutes later he got past Juranovic into the box before Carl Starfelt slid in and took him down a moment of madness from him John Beaton pointed to the spot James Tavernier stepped up from 12 yards and he finished emphatically into the top corner to make it 2-1 Rangers VAR then checked for a couple of Celtic penalties the first was the strongest claim the ball hit Connor Goldson's hand as it was up by his face but John Beaton wasn't called to the screen for that one the game then looked as if it would maybe peter out with no real clear cut chances Rangers looking dangerous a couple of times on the break but you can never write Celtic off in the late stages they love a late goal and that's what saved them this time round it was all a bit scrappy in the box with two minutes left of the 90 it eventually fell to Kyogo whose first time finish levelled the game up so the gap at the top of the table stays at nine points the full time score at Ibrox is Rangers 2 Celtic 2 and Jim Duffy it wasn't a game full of quality but we got goals and it's a result that certainly suits Celtic a lot more than it does Rangers it's kind of strange to that Andrew you know normally a 2-2 game uh, you know, you, you know, everyone's delighted. You know, with the excitement, the, the you know, the, the entertainment. But yeah, you're right. A lot of the goals came from errors, or you know, the, there wasn't great um, slick passes, uh, passages of play with, with either side. And it's kind of strange because uh, Michael Beale was saying that you know he's had four wins, but he's not been happy with the performance. And yet, the second half today, his performance levels were much, much better. But didn't manage a win. I'm sure he was a sacrifice some of that performance just to see the game out. But um, Celtic, you know, you know Celtic, they're never going to sit back and accept losing the game. They're always going to go for it. In fair play to Ange Postecoglou, he kept Kyogo on. He went, he went basically 4-2-4 four, four, with two wingers, two strikers. Had a bit of a gamble, left himself exposed. Rangers could have capitalised, I think, better on two or three occasions when he nicked the ball around about the halfway line. Then he had 3v3 or 3v2 situations. Uh, Joe Hart had one good save. But Celtic had that one chance at Felty Kyogo. He's in red top goal scoring form. He wasn't going to pass up that chance and finish 2 2. The happier manager, I'm sure, will be as Boston Kogu because his team started nine points in front and they finished nine points in front. And for most people, no one would uh, imagine that that will be able to, Rangers will be able to turn that around between now and the end of the season. The talk of Michael Beale's Rangers side so far, a lot of it has been about character rather than quality. Yeah. We saw that today yeah. after half time when they came from a goal behind, hadn't looked great in the first half and then got those two goals. But the blueprint of Ange Postacoglu is we never stop that's yeah. his catchphrase he says it all the time and you can never write Celtic off and you had a feeling even though Celtic hadn't really created anything in the latter stages of that game they're always capable of something yeah I think the squad's stronger I think big in those type of players although they went all influential like Abada Giamakis was in the mix um, Jota was in the mix for the goal and again those type of players I think when Rangers almost settled it they, they put uh, James Sands on they, they kind of tried to hold on to that 2-1 but listen Ryan Jack scored a fantastic goal 
Uh, Tavernier was a great penalty. Um, Sakala played well a couple of times. He just he needs to calm down in that final moment. So there was some positive stuff uh, from Rangers. I think Michael Beale will be happy with some of the progress. But you can see Celtic have a way of playing, a style of playing, which has been built under the last 18 months or so under Ange Postecoglou. Michael Beale's only been in there for a few weeks. So that's going to take time to get his style and his stamp on the team. I think the Rangers fans will go away a bit frustrated. Celtic fans are still here, still singing, because, as I said, the 2-2 draw, uh, you know, does absolutely no damage um, to their title uh, challenge, or sorry, their title hopes. And, again, I think that, uh, you know, the way they play, Celtic are always likely to score. And, and I think that that's what Celtic fans want to see. They want to see their team coming to Ibrox and being positive. And over the piece, I think over the base of the 90 minutes, to me, a draw was probably a fair result. Well, the home ends are pretty much empty now. The Rangers fans have flooded out. 700 or so Celtic fans still there standing and singing. They're happy with what they saw in the final few moments of that game. The full-time score here at Ibrox is Rangers 2, Celtic 2. And where does that leave us, Hugh Keevans? It leaves Rangers with a psychological kick in the teeth because they thought that they had done enough to win the match, reduce the gap to six points and also ask questions about Celtic's invincibility. Instead, Celtic, Rangers' first foot in 2023, disrupted the party right at the end. The goal from Kyogo, his first ever against Rangers since joining Celtic, has allowed the fans to sing, has allowed Ange Postacoglu to understand, I think, that he got a point that at one stage even Ange Postacoglu would have doubted he would get a very good day for Celtic out of a not very good performance. I'd agree with that. Ange Postacoglu will be the happier of the two managers because of the point. Now, not because of the way his team's played. We keep saying the standards that he sets are so high that I think he will be disappointed how his team performed with the ball. But to get an equaliser so late in the game... And the damage uh, has been minimised Then I think he will be happy for Beal Then I still stick to my statement before Rangers had to win the game To keep this title race alive And when they had it there in their hands Get into the last few minutes I'm pretty sure a lot of Rangers fans Will be going away frustrated That their side couldn't see that out Yeah there'll be mixed questions on that um, They're in t- control of the game for me They don't look under any pressure I can totally understand. He looks at the clock, 2-1, so important to get three points. He makes more defensive substitutions. Um, Celtic, they make the positive 1-2 up top. Kyogo staying on the pitch, not being involved in the game at all. I think Ange Poster Cogley will be over a moon getting out of there with the point and the gap still nine plus a goal difference. I don't see Rangers coming back from that. In terms of performance levels, Jim, we'll find out. We're going to open the phones. You, you would be surprised, you know, even if Rangers had held on to win the game, there would have been delight. You wouldn't have said it was a brilliantly fluid performance. It certainly wasn't from Celtic either. Did, did it just get all a bit scrappy? Yeah, I mean, it's difficult. The guys, in the, you know, Gordon and, and, and Mark know more than, than most of uh, these set of games. They're not always you know, as pleasing as I would like them to be, you know, they're very, very like uh, derbies are, any, any uh, city derbies, they're competitive, they're fast, they're furious, the game was played at a good tempo, it's played a good spirit, there's only two bookings, and I think both of them are very late in the match, yep. over the 90th minute, so, you know, I mean, I think that, you know, there was a lot of players getting pressed, you know, really quickly, both teams try to press quickly, so therefore that made players some rush, rush some of the passes, but I think from, from Celtic's point of view, they traditionally can work through that, but, you know, some of their key players, as we mentioned, Matt O'Reilly, Forrest, there was a couple of other ones, just didn't, just didn't at the top of their game. And Rangers grew into the game. I think Lundstrom coming off was a big blow, but I think he looked shattered. I, I know you were saying he looked like a, a I don't think it was, Gordon. I think he, he, was, he was breathing, he was kind of signalling as he came off uh, to, to the... To the physios, so perhaps again he maybe he maybe had a, a cold or something like that, and that affected him. Um, and I think it was more frustration. Um, but but l- listen, James Sands going on. I think sent a message: like, we're going to protect us to two one league, which you can understand. Um, and Celtic done the other way. They went, listen, we're not going to accept two now. We're putting four forward players on, and we're going to get ga- we're going to gamble. But yeah, without being a brilliant game, 
uh, there was still enough in it to have plenty of talking points. Um, obviously, we never seen back. I, I have no idea if it was a penalty or not. I heard you guys talking about the VAR. Um, but I've got absolutely no idea. I couldn't even see any handball from where I was. Um, so that might be the one contentious decision. But over that, I think the game was played pretty pretty calmly for for um, a New Year's Day fixture between Rangers and Celtic. We're going to open the phone lines at three o'clock when these games kick off. So not too not too far into the future at all. So you can get your thoughts down, get them in 01419511025. But we're not ready to take them yet because we have to quickly ground the other grounds as well. There's a lot happening, big games. Um, to sort of set the, the tone a bit for later, Hugh VAR wasn't hugely involved in terms of no. um, With high frequency No But the one big one would be Should Celtic have had a penalty for a handball by Conor Goldson? In my estimation It's not a terribly hard decision to make I think it is deliberate handball uh, I, I think VAR got it wrong and uh, Celtic, while being mm. very happy with the point that they have ultimately taken, will feel that they should have got a penalty kick. I mean, the ref got it wrong, if it's wrong in, in Hughes' mind first, and his mm. original on-field decision stood. So, um, I, I don't know, Mark, what your take on it. You you thought it wasn't earlier. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm still going to stick to my original judgment on this one. I would love <laughs> to stand here, Gordon, and say it was... A stonewall penalty kick Now There's no doubt It hit Goldson's hands But I just feel that Goldson's hands were in front of him I, I believe that It didn't make his body Any bigger It's a natural reaction And I'll say it again If it was in the opposite box I would be saying Exactly the same That For me I would have thought It had been harsh If that was given um, I don't like the handball rule First and foremost Like most um, I thought that Goldson got away with one um, I know what Mark's saying There's arguments for and against But in today's game The way it's You know you've looked at other penalty kicks And been given that you can't believe Then I think that Probably got that call wrong um, But to be honest with you I don't think Celtic Deserved to, to win the game I thought uh, at a point A piece was a fair result Because I thought Celtic looked uh, Control of the first half I thought Rangers Much better second half And uh, I think Celtic Could be the happier side uh, Let's bring in Some of the guys Who are out and about At the other grounds Getting ready for some big games Which we are looking forward to <sighs> Just to, to touch base On that quickly Fraser Wishart Where does that leave things As far as you're concerned Well I think you guys Have probably covered it all I think it's a hammer blow For, for Rangers to, to have been Not really in the game For the first half hour And you, you spoke at the Joe Hart mistake Which I have seen I've not seen much of the game But uh, saw that one Oh, he did himself a great save from Ryan Kent. That gave Rangers a real momentum before half time and into the second half. And to be ahead, made the substitutions with the whole point of it to see the game out, you know, bring on Sands in midfield as well. To lose a goal like that at the end, I think will be a hammer blow for, for Rangers. And uh, for me, I agree with everybody else that said that Rangers needed to win that. You know, nine points behind. Also, goal difference is huge as well. So it's essentially 10 points behind. Celtic have dropped five points in the first 20 games. Now, where are they going to drop 11 points? And that 11 points is only um, if Rangers win every single game as well. So you're really looking at Celtic being going to have to drop 15, 16 points if, if Rangers... Sorry, Celtic drop that if Rangers are going to have a chance to win the league. So for me, the, the league is, is, is not going to go Rangers' way. I think Celtic will get there. They'll go home pretty happy um, after after grabbing that late equaliser. But uh, a real hammer blow for the Rangers players. They'll be devastating in that dressing room. David Field, how do you look back on that result? Yeah, it's a strange game. Gone. I'm, I'm out at Livingston. I managed to see the bulk of it. Uh, I agree with you. I, th I think the, the the Joe Hart sort of moment where he lapsed and, and Alfredo Morelos kind of the ball off him. And then I think Greg Taylor's substitution as well because I think Joseph Juranovic. I don't know what was going on, but he didn't look fit. He didn't look comfortable at all. And I think Celtic really lost their rhythm because he looked really really comfortable the first half hour. Rangers after that really really good. Um, but it all came down to seeing the game out and, and I think you reeled off the stats as well Gordon Celtic score late goals it's not by accident it's by design they keep going always keep going and you would never rule them out and he'll go I think he needed that goal against Rangers I think that's 5-4 and four now could be a huge goal towards the title I don't see Rangers coming back now come on then 01419511025 as soon as the 3 o'clock games get underway we'll get your say on events at Ibrox is that a good point for Celtic is it a bad point for Rangers where uh, did that game swing? What about the Conor Goldson alleged handball and all the rest of it? Get your calls in, we'll line them up uh, and we'll get to you after we go back around the grounds for the three o'clock games next. The Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast with Lucas Volvo. The big event is on now with exclusive discounts on approved used Volvos. 